uh, been elected chair of the Hardship Parking Committee, which is going to be uh, a challenge to make sure that's done correctly. But I look forward to being transparent with this body. If anyone has any questions about that process or how that's going to work, uh, again, feel free to reach out. Uh, the vice chair is going to be Elena uh, Vedrascu, who's a uh, the, the vice president of GPSG. So looking forward to working with her, um, some good collaboration between undergrads and grads. So looking forward to that. Also going to be co-chairing a working group with uh, Chair Maladkar, which will be a fun uh, moment of old Lang sign back to the Senate days. So that that code revision group uh, should be getting started here in the next, next few weeks. Um, the last thing I have to share is that uh, I'm not in North Carolina or Chapel Hill at the moment, and I'm working full time 40 hours a week. If you need me, I'll be maintaining not I don't want to call them office hours, but I'll be on my computer on my phone doing student government work between the hours of approximately five and 8pm uh, on the, the business days of the week. So uh, feel free to get in touch with me, you know how to do so. Um, and again, I'll be sending out an email to the listserv for my new email, you'll have that. If anybody needs my phone number, any other way to get in touch. Um, make sure that you do. You can shoot me a, a message right here in this Zoom. We want to make sure that uh, my office is a resource to y'all um, and we continue our collaboration and communication that's been strong uh, thus far. So thank you very much. I'll take any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Oh. No, no, sorry. I was just about to say seeing no questions. <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, Vice President Robinson. Appreciate it. Um, Treasurer Gratsky, you are now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, okay. Um, the so, huge deterrent. Well, in this case, it wasn't a um, uh, So, um, first of all, uh, SFAC met on May 25th, um, really just to approve amendments to the SFAC bylaws. Um, I sent you all the agenda from that, uh, the agenda and minutes. Um, if anyone's interested in seeing the new bylaws, um, I, I, I probably first would recommend you get psychiatric care, but then uh, after that, I'd send that send it to you um, if, if you're interested. Um, uh, we'll probably be getting started uh, in earnest on fee review uh, and uh, and then on audits um, in the fall, um, uh, pursuant to conversations with uh, administration about the uh, the other side of the fee review process. Um, in conjunction with the rest of exec branch, uh, I am conducting interviews for my office currently, um, specifically for two deputy treasurer positions. Um, if you know anybody who is interested in serving in a student government finance role, uh, or, or there's also a uh, university finance role, I'll strongly encourage you to refer them to uh, the exec branch senior staff application to apply to, for those roles, uh, which should be very interesting. I want to say I mentioned this to you at um, the last meeting, I want to say well over a month ago, uh, but I am continuing to work on setting up a meeting uh, with myself, uh, SBP Van, GPSG President Nolert, and my GPSG calendar part, Vice President Harsh Agarwal, um, with uh, Vice Chancellor Nate Nuffman, I think I already said that. Um, uh, I am currently just waiting on one person uh, to get back to uh, the rest of us on that, and then hopefully we should be able to schedule something. Um, I'm meeting with Dr. Kunstman on Friday in order to discuss uh, student government accounts. Uh, I believe that will not just be the accounts for Senate funds, but also um, the accounts, the uh, exec branch enrichment fund, and the uh, Richard F. Emerging Leaders Fund. Uh, I'd like to, I have asked to see both of those and I believe that is what will happen. Um, so I will, I will be able to communicate that not just to uh, Chair Ertl and the Finance Committee, but to the whole of you uh, at some point in the near future. Um, there is a new line item change, form, change request form available on the Exec Branch Heal Life page. Um, the new version is very similar to the previous version with a few minor adjustments. Um, I've so far only had to use it once, um, but that will be set for the new fiscal year uh, when organizations are more regular, regularly uh, requesting that sort of thing. Um, but that, that is uh, operational. Uh, so as I've informed you, there is a new version of the treasurer's test 
Um, this has been modified quite significantly, and that was one of the promises I made from the from, from the very beginning uh, of my seeking this role. Um, so I summarized these changes in the email that I sent to you all. I hope you had the opportunity to look over them. If not, take it, take some time, please, to do that soon. Um, I mentioned in that email that I, I would not be requiring senators to take this new version on my end. Um, I have a few updates on that. One, I have, I men I've mentioned previously that those who had taken, failed to, I, to take the previous version uh, by the deadline, uh, that I would really have to disallow them uh, from voting on uh, finance bills uh, per the code. Um, I, I think that the code is oddly written and oddly constructed um, in Title II on this issue. So I will allow those senators on my end to, um, to, 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 to take this version of the code within two weeks of when it went live, which is when I sent it to you, I sent it to you all immediately. Within two weeks of that, I, and, and then we, you will be fine and on my end. Um, I have also been informed that um, Ethics Chair Stevens will be requiring all of you to take it. Um, so in order to vote on finance bills, uh, and I believe that it was made in conjunction with uh, uh, Chair, Chair Ertl, um, I will, defer to her on questions on that specifically. I'm sure she'll mention it. Um, but please let me know if you have any questions on the exam uh, or, or otherwise. Um, I have, uh, in conjunction with Chair Erdl, although I've been trying to pick up for him, he's currently in Europe and working very hard to try and uh, to, to um, be here for all of us stateside. Um, uh, I've been working on getting the Title IV Revision Working Group up and running. I've sent out, I went to meet, we finalized our membership. Uh, I'd like to particularly thank Senators Vespute and Pierce for participating in it. Um, uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have their ideas and energy on this group. Uh, I would expect to, that this working group will ultimately recommend some fairly radical changes to the financial regulations. Um, and of course, that will, will all come by the Senate. Uh, at some point. Um, and finally, I am continuing to communicate with and to assist organizations with financial concerns as necessary. Um, it's been obviously a lot slower since the passage of the reimbursement deadline, um, but I have had a few communications and it's been very smooth for the most part. Um, and I, there's really nothing of note to touch on there. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, seeing none. Thank you, Judge Grotsky. Um, oh, sorry to interrupt, but I think um, Chair Stevens has raised her hand. Oh, I apologize. Chair Stevens, go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, thank you, Judge Grotsky. I just wanted to um, give an update on that. I believe that Chair Erdl and I are not requiring, requiring senators who took the Treasury's test um, for the 104th, um, but we may figure that out. So I that's still in progress, but I think right now we are only we are only requiring people who have yet to take a treasurer's test for this Senate, if that makes sense. Okay. And I'll speak more about this in my report. Thank you. I, I it must have been a misunderstanding of my end. All right. Seeing no other questions, do sorry, we have Chair Gary has raised his hand? Oh my I'm so sorry. Zoom is sometimes a little tricky to work. I apologize. Chair Gary, go ahead. Yeah, um, so it's my understanding that this version of the treasurer test is like, like significantly more challenging than the one from last year. Like, can you explain your rationale behind like why the test is harder um, and like why that is necessary? Yes, I will be happy to. Um, so there, I, I was on finance committee I, uh, when I was in the Senate last year. And I continuously saw problems that arose from both senators and organizations having what I would call at best a cursory understanding of Title IV. Um, Title IV is quite complex um, and it is quite important that it be followed very faithfully, uh, in my opinion. Um, and 
I do not believe that the previous version of the treasurer's test really forced people to learn about Title IV, to learn about the financial process, and to be able to do that in a dynamic way. The new version uh, is, so I think the biggest change, and perhaps what you're, you're thinking of, is that the previous version essentially couldn't be failed. You just kept, if you got a question wrong, it just sent you back and had you answer again. Uh, and then you couldn't really submit it until until all the questions had been answered correctly. It, it, and that was fine, but I think a lot of people, uh, from my understanding, basically just went back. And I'm not saying most of you did this, but enough people basically when they would get a question wrong, would go back, try another one until eventually they got the right answer. Um, so that's not what I want. Uh, so first of all, and then I would like people to have a level of dynamic understanding of the code beyond just what was on that version uh, in order to be able to really apply the ideas. And I think that in particular, I'm trying to test for a stronger understanding uh, of the uh, of the funding criteria that are established in chapter three. Um, and I think that that will go a very long way at making uh, finance committee committee's job a lot easier and at improving the uh, improving the, improving uh, the process. Not a question. Sorry, go ahead. So um, I, I missed this part, but uh, is it everyone who has to take this test or is it just uh, newcomers or people who uh, who, ha who has to take this test? Uh, per, per what's been communicated just now by uh, uh, Chair Stevens, it'll be if you have pre if you took the FY 21 to 22 uh, version of the treasurer's test and completed that you are good. If you have not, you will now be required to take this version of the test in order to regain uh, your uh, ability to vote on finance bills and to pass it, I should add. Um, and passing will be uh, 80%. Wait, so, so then everyone who's new has to take this test, but senators from the past don't have to take this test? Or, or how does that work? So I, I don't understand why it's if the, if the problem is like past senators, then I don't understand why it's significantly harder for uh, this year's people. That's what I'm wondering. Um, well, it, so you all, I think, or the vast majority of you all uh, took the old version. Uh, so I, I would disagree that it was necessarily a problem with past senators. Uh, it was just as equally. Uh, wasn't that what you said uh, earlier? There? Uh, yeah, Senator Bass, please, um, please let me. I would say that yeah. it was a problem with um, previous just in general, it was, and something that I've also heard uh, from people who, you know, did the process in years, years before uh, that, it, that it was a problem. Um, I think that it is very important that there be a very comprehensive understanding of the code. And I am very, very adamant uh, that people really take a close look at the uh, at, at the um, at, at the code in order to, to to be certified as an organizational treasurer. Uh, in terms of your voting rights on finance bills, I will almost I'll ninety eight percent just defer to uh, Chair Stevens and Chair Ertl on this on that. Um, but I, I I will say that I think that this is a force for good. All right, looks like we have one hand still up. Uh, Chair Stevens? Yes, um, so just again as a clarification, um, the people that will be taking this test are not necessarily new senators. It is anyone who has not taken a finance, or the treasurer's test, my apologies, who has not taken the treasurer's test yet as a senator for the 104th Senate. So um, previously we didn't have a new treasurer's test. So we just required all new senators to take it because it was um, the way it was set up. It was impossible for the old senators to retake the test for some reason. Um, so it will just be senators who have yet to take a, a um, treasurer's test like for this Senate. So pretty much any returning senator and any senator who was unable to take the finance test already, um, if that makes more sense. All right. Thank you, Chair Stevens. Uh, 
Chair Dahl, your hand was up. Did you have a comment or a question? No, I, um, yeah. No. Okay, um, Senator Fowl, you had, did you have something? Uh, so basically, if you already took the test, you don't have to take a new one. Yes, this is correct. If you have taken the treasurer's test, you do not have to, to take it again. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, Treasurer Grotsky. Um, do we have a report from the <clears throat> USG Director of State and External Affairs? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, hi, everyone. I hope you're enjoying your summer. My update will be brief. Um, I have met with the Office of Federal Affairs ahead of us um, planning to schedule a lobbying trip um, at some point during the fall semester. Um, so that is being in the works with their office. Um, and I am scheduled to meet with the new um, Director of State Affairs for the University, Amy McConkey, um, at some point over the next few weeks. And then also my GPSG counterpart and I are scheduling a meeting for next week. Um, just to make sure we're aligned on um, any policy priorities that we can work on with the graduate student government. Um, and yeah, I believe that's all of my updates. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? All right, seeing none, do we have a report from the undergraduate student attorney general? Yes, hi everyone. My name is Vanessa Chazelle. I am the um, undergraduate student attorney general for the UNC Honor System. Um, just a quick uh, glimpse at the cases that we are currently running. Um, we have 19 at the cabinet stage. What that means is that me and my deputy are um, doing an initial investigation into uh, these reports. We have 19 of those currently at our stage. And then there are currently 40 in the managing stage. These are cases that are being um, set for hearings or they're meeting with um, their councils or they're meeting with um, any other party that they would be required for their hearing to run. Um, and again, we have 40 in that stage. Um, and I believe 14 of those 40 currently have hearings set. And that's it. All right, thank you so much. Are there any questions for the undergraduate student attorney general? All right, seeing none, do we have a report from the undergraduate honor court chair? Yep, uh, so much like uh, I'm Cole Ventura, I'm the undergraduate honor court chair, and much like Vanessa was saying, of those 14 uh, cases that we have currently ready to, and almost ready to go, we have 12 of them already set and scheduled with chairs uh, about to be heard within the next roughly about week, two weeks. Uh, that's all I got. Any questions? All right, seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, do we have a report from the Undergraduate Honor System Outreach Coordinator? Yeah, hello everybody. My name is Jesus Enriquez. Um, right now we're just in the works of setting up events and figuring out how to reach all the students possible to join the Honor System. But as of right now, that's all we have. All right, thank you very much. Do we have a report from the undergraduate student government advisor? All right, it would appear that Bobby is not here tonight. Um, all right, moving on. This week, there were no papers uh, received addressed to the Senate. Uh, we are now online for reports from the officers of the Senate. Uh, Chair Stevens, you are now recognized to report on the Ethics Committee. Thank you, Speaker Phillips. Um, I will try to be brief. So hi, everyone. Um, I hope you're having a great summer. Um, so my absence form I talked about at the last Senate meeting um, is now available. Um, we had it used for this session and it's linked in Christian's email. Um, it seems to be working well. Um, and just a reminder, you can either use the form or email me with absences, late arrival, or late exit requests. It works either way. It's just whatever you prefer to use. Um, since the last meeting, I have emailed two senators concerning missing meetings. Um, they missed like a certain the meeting numbers. They, they missed enough meetings um, for their absence points to tick over um, to the threshold where they were required to be notified. Um, so that would be Senators Lang and Jelengowski. Um, if they are not present tonight, they will lose all voting privileges and must write an attendance plan that will then be um, checked over by the Senate. Uh, this is fairly standard. Um, the, okay, and then the deadline for the code test um, has been extended to FDOC if you have not taken it yet, so you must take it by August 15th. Um, most people have already taken this. This is not a new code test. 
Um, it's just there was a couple of senators who are unable to before the original deadline. Um, so if you have any questions about that, please reach out to either me or Chair Gary. Um, let's see, there's, as you've heard, there's a new treasurer's test. Um, if you've not taken the test for this Senate for the 104th, so either you are a returning Senator or you are unable to take the original test, um, you need to take this version. Um, it will be due on June 20th, I believe. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can either ask me um, or you can ask Chair Ertl. Um, we're trying to figure out times for that and everything. Um, the Ethics Committee met on May 4th and voted to begin an ethics investigation. This should occur before the next Senate meeting, but we are still trying to schedule it around like just all the committee schedules. Um, and then finally, the Code of Ethical Conduct is in progress and it will be further workshopped at the next Ethics Committee meeting. Uh, I believe that's all for me. Are there any questions? All right, seeing none. Thank you, Chair Stevens. Um, Chair Malakar, I don't believe you are here, or at least you weren't during roll, but if you are now here, you are recognized to report on the ONA committee. Yeah, I was here during roll, but my internet was unstable, so I didn't hear when Arthi called my name. Um, so I don't have many updates for ONA committee other than we are going to be meeting about two or three times this summer in between uh, the Senate meetings. And I did send out a Teams message, but I don't think everyone got it. So I'm going to start sending out emails instead. Um, so yeah, we'll be working on some legislation over the summer. And other than that, uh, like Vice President Robinson said, I'll be working on, I'll be doing the working group for the code um, with him. And that's about it. All right, are there any questions? All right, seeing none. Uh, Chair Gary, you're now recognized to report on the RJ committee. Yeah, I don't have much today, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, first thing is with the like code revision working groups. I want to start by saying they were supposed to originally be like significantly larger, um, but because um, we didn't get like a large commitment from the executive branch, I made the decision to kind of scale them back since there was no point in just putting like seven senators on a committee um, because the point was to try and bring together exec and senate to work out legislative agendas quickly over the summer. Um, we still need senators to sign up to help review Title V, which is like the external appointments section and like the appointments process for EBO and cabinet. We need senators that are willing to help um, reform Title I, which is the executive branches section of the code, um, and Title II, which is the um, Senate section of the code. Titles three and four, their working groups are totally set up and will meet as soon as um, their like leaders are ready to go. Um, the only other updates I want to mention are uh, with the code test. If you haven't taken the code test yet, um, please take it um, so you can get your voting rights restored. I think that's um, what um, Chair Stevens decided on. And if you ha have any questions about either of those things, feel free to let me know. But I don't have any other updates for today. All right. Any uh, questions for Chair Gary? All right. Seeing none. Um, thank you, Chair Gary. Chair Adal, you're not recognized for one of the Finance Committee. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I apologize for having my camera off. It is 3.05 a.m. where I'm at um, right now. Um, I'm currently in Europe conducting some research. Um, I'm happy to be co-leading the Finance Code Revision Working Group with Treasurer Grodsky, and I thank him for um, creating the new Treasurer's Test. Um, I think uh, Chair Stevens and Treasurer Grodsky have um, done a fairly decent job going over that, um, but it will most likely be due um, on June 21st, or sorry, on June 20th, and we will likely have our first finance committee meeting um, on, the 20, on, the, on the 21st or sometime within that week um, to go over branch budgets. Um, speaking of which, um, all, I guess the branch leaders present here, um, if you would please respond to my email regarding as to whether you would intend on submitting a branch budget, that would be much appreciated so I can go ahead scheduling um, finance hearings um, so we can allocate um, funding for all of the student government branches. Um, I do have a bill, um, a finance bill on the, well, a finance related bill on the agenda tonight, um, a bill to eliminate mandatory funding for the Sports Club Council. 
And um, I believe that is all um, queries. Yes, Senator. Senator, um, I see a couple of hands are up. Uh, Elliot, go ahead, or excuse me, Senator uh, Galano, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to make a comment real quick and let you know that during the public comment period, we do have a few people who represent athletics at UNC who are going to be commenting on that bill specifically. Um, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. All right. Thank you. That is noted. Uh, Ms. Chaz Chazal, you're, you're recognized. Um, would just for clarification's sake, um, the honor system is broken up into three separate branches. Would you like us to submit individual budget requests for those branches, or do you want us to submit an entire honor system budget request? So um, per the code, um, I'll, I'll have to look back on it, um, but as far as I remember, there is one allocation for the Supreme Court and then one um, budget for the rest of the honor system. Um, but I can get back to you on that. Um, but I, I did send a separate email to the, um, I guess, Chief Associate Justice um, regarding their um, budget. Um, but the honor system has its own, I guess, budget separate from the Supreme Court. Okay, sounds good, thanks. Are there any other questions for Chair? Oh, uh, Senator Morris, go ahead. Um, this is kind of a general question. If I'm on a club sports team, am I allowed to vote on that or no? Um, that is a good question. I am on a club sports team as well. Um, you probably should be. Um, I, I guess you wouldn't be able to vote if you're on the sports club council. Um, because that is the specific organization affected by the bill. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to back that up, that would be my interpretation as well. I believe uh, Chair Stevens, as the Ethics Committee Chairman, do you have anything to add about that? Um, no, I do not. I feel like Chair Gary um, would probably be more knowledgeable in that area than I would. Uh, Chair Gary, do you have any uh, dissent to the opinion of myself and Chair um, at all? The code, the code just says that like you're not allowed to vote on things that affect organizations that you are a member of. So I would say like as long as you're not a member of the sports club council, there shouldn't be a problem here. Okay, great, thank you. All right, great. Do, um, are there any other questions for Chair at all? <clears throat> all right, seeing none. Um, Pro Tempore Anadura, you are now recognized. Do you have a report? Yeah, um, hi everyone. So first off, sorry for being a little MIA. I was out of the country for a few weeks and got back last week and I didn't have Wi-Fi during that time. So a lot to catch up on. But um, if you have anything that you wanna to talk to me about, I am available. So um, please reach out. The other thing is our Senate staff application is out. Um, it's been emailed out. And um, we will probably have to work on a social media campaign to try to get as much participation with that as possible. So I will reach out to Chair Melkar shortly and we'll work something out there. And um, other just housekeeping things for the Pro meeting. Pro Tempore, I apologize for cutting you off. If you have your microphone on, can you please mute it? Um, it's very hard to hear her talk with all the interruptions. All right, thank you very much. Sorry about that, go ahead. No problem. Um, on that note, uh, just some meeting housekeeping things, um, you know, stay on mute. If you're not talking, you can raise your hand and um, Chair Phillips will call on you as we kind of move into discussion and questions and whatnot. Um, if you can make sure your name is present, you can change your name, that would be great. And if you are able to, if you can keep your camera on, that would also be awesome. Um, but yeah, any questions? All right, seeing none, thank you very much. Um, we're now on for the speaker's report. Not much tonight for the speaker's report, it is pretty brief. Uh, I hope everybody's having a nice break so far. Um, just a heads up from what I've heard from a lot of folks, I understand that some of the legislation tonight, we will have some debate, which is great. And that's what we like to have. Um, but I would like to remind everybody um, that while we are not in person, we are still on Zoom. Um, 
we still want to have a level of respect for each other and especially our art opinions as we debate as we debate the legislation tonight. Uh, beyond that, the only thing I've got is if you would like to, I will reiterate what Chair Gary said earlier. If you'd like to sign up for one of his code revision groups, I would highly encourage it. Um, the greater participation that we have, the better. Um, but that is all that I've got right now. Do we have any questions? All right, seeing none, we are now entering the public comment period. Um, is there anybody on the Zoom call that has any public comments for the Senate? Uh, I see a hand raised, Olivia Bettis. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, you're recognized. Yes, hi y'all, I'm Olivia Bettis. I am the president of the Club Sports Council and I'd like to address the USB 104007 bill, a bill to eliminate mandatory funding for the uh, Club Sports Council, which calls for student government to no longer delegate funding to the Club Sports Calendar Council under the claims that the Club Sports Council has not kept proper financial documentation and has failed to properly fund athletic groups on campus. I urge the Senate to vote against this bill. Basing this bill on the claims stated before would be both untrue and unfair to the work the Club Sports Council has done in allocating funds and the work that campus rec, the campus rec office has done to properly track expenses. After, after receiving funding from the student government this year, our advisor met with the business office in the union to verify document expectations. To this, they simply asked us to send a monthly tracking report. Therefore, throughout the year, our advisor has tracked all uh, sport club purchases that use on-campus funding. And based on these transactions, each month we have sent a report at, to the business office at the union. These reports are available upon request from the union business office. In addition, the Sport Club Council has held an application process for all club sports to receive student government funding. From this, we spent multiple hours reviewing these applications to determine a fair distribution of student government allocations. Based on this, student government cannot and should not justify defunding the Club Sport Council on these claims. In addition, I would like to point out that we were not contacted by anyone in student government all year about there being any issue with the documents we were sending to the business office each month. And if we had been, we would have uh, easily sent any additional information being request requested. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Bettis. Um, Kiana Oldham, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, yeah, no, you're good. That's it's Kiana. Um, I am president of the ski and snowboard team at UNC, so I am here to speak on behalf of the bill about eliminating our funding. Um, so if we weren't able to get any money through uh, the sports club, uh, we would actually have to disband as a team to actually be a competitive team. Um, like we wouldn't be able to have a team next year. The, the team registration fees alone are already kind of around like the 3000 amount and we always utilize and max out any funds given to be able to register with our our national, uh, I guess, um, program that we compete under as well as any other fees for competitions and stuff. Um, and so it would really seriously damage um, just kind of athletics and us as a team if we weren't able to get this funding, especially a, we have a pretty sizable team, almost like 130 dues paying members. And so um, this would really uh, cause great issues for us. So we are against the bill. Thank you. Thank you, um, Leah. Um, that's not the only name I see. I Again, if I'm mispronouncing, I apologize. Uh, you're recognized. Thank you. My name is Leah Riley. Um, I'm president of the UNC ballroom dance team. And I would like to add that we have always done our best to go through proper procedures in using our funding from student government. And I was not aware of these issues and I really wish that I had known more if I could have helped um, just to make sure that all of our permits and everything were in order. I would like to say that ballroom dance is not widely accessible due to its high financial costs. The funding that we receive helps us allow more students and more people to learn about ballroom and to try something that they wouldn't have been able to do before. It's, it would place financial hardship upon, upon our team members if there was, if funding is rescinded and we are very much trying to go to nationals next year. Uh, 
Thank you. Um, David Go, you have your hand raised. You're recognized. Hello, yes. I am David Go, the race director of the running club. Um, yeah, please vote against this bill. Um, we we race against college uh, running clubs um, like all across the Southeast um, and, and gas is expensive right now. And we, we want to be able to, you know, pay so we can go to track meets and, and run. Um, like as is we like in most cases, people still have to pay for their own hotels and stuff um, just because we're, you know, we're, we're spending all our money on race registrations and, and gas and stuff. Um, and so if we lose funding people, we probably won't be able to race. So yeah, please vote against. All right, thank you. Um, Haywood Williams, uh, you are recognized. All right, thank you for recognizing me. Um, I urge you to vote in negation of this bill and mainly on the reason of mental health. I would say that as a student is transferred from Appalachian University um, during the middle of COVID, it was pretty hard for me personally to like find a group of people. And so one of the things that Running Club did for me um, was kind of give me a group of people, a group of people who I find um, common, common interest with, common joy um, and running and getting to go do these kind of fun things. And it's kind of really built a friend base around me that I didn't have otherwise. Um, and I think a, a community, uh, Carolina, I think we all agree mental health is very important. And one of the best ways you can do that is through sports and activities like running and like our club sports. And I think mental health will be neg negatively, negatively impacted by this bill. Um, so for those reasons, I urge you to negate this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, Tori Hooker. Hey, good evening. Um, my name is Tori Hooker. Um, thank you for calling on me and letting me um, have an opportunity to speak. I'm the um, advisor for all the sport clubs and I also um, serve um, with Campus Recreation on staff as the Senior Assistant Director of Sport Programs, um, which is the intramural sports and sport club programs. Um, I wanted to just echo the sentiments that have already been stated and also um, just um, to kind of put things in perspective about what the um, funding situation looks like for most sport clubs. Um, so we have we currently have 48 um, active sport clubs um, that are in our program and um, the sport club council, the executive board um, has to see the, the full budgets for each of those um, and they present and then they also um, request those funding um, or those funds. Um, the sport clubs currently receive a portion of allocations um, from student fees from campus recreation um, and then we also um, receive or this past year we received the, the fifty thousand dollars from student government um, as an example though that is um, it was that totaled the funding together the fifty thousand plus what we received from campus recreation was only um, two hundred thousand dollars and um, the full amount of expenses for all sport clubs was over, or is projected to be over one million dollars. Um, that leaves eight hundred thousand dollars that is um, coming out of pocket for all of our athletes um, or through donations um, or fundraising efforts. Um, so, in order to try to make it as accessible as possible um, for all of our clubs, we do urge you to please um, not defund um, Sport Club Council. All right. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hooker. Um, Chief of Staff Tweeden, is your hand raised? Yeah, it is. I appreciate that, Mr. Speaker. Um, I just wanted to briefly clear up a little bit of information. So I've been in the 103rd Senate when we discussed the original version of this bill. Um, and it just seems like there's been a little miscommunication on what I understand this bill to accomplish. In no way does it uh, eliminate funding for sports groups. In fact, I think that'd be a terrible thing to do. And I think everyone in the Senate would agree that'd be a bad thing to do. Um, it removes it from going directly through the sports club council and allows um, requests to work the same way as it does for any other RSO, um, which significantly broadens the pot of 
resources available on this um, on this like subject, right? So like right now we're capped at fifty thousand. We can spend on this. Um, removing that limit like actually broadens the funding available, and it also streamlines processes for emergency funding, right? So last year we had a competitor on the uh, table tennis team who we wanted to send to nationals, uh, and that wasn't funded through the SEC. That was through the undergraduate senate because it was a a more direct response. Um, so, uh, yes, my, my understanding is that this would go back to the pre COVID system. Um, this is coming from someone who wasn't here pre COVID. Um, but it does elevate the Senate oversight and sort of the engagement with student government that cross campus support, um, and broadens the pot of resources available. So I, I would highly encourage this debate to continue on the item, uh, but I, I just wanted to clear that up. Anyone who's here, you're not gonna lose your funding for your organizations, no matter how this bill goes. I just wanted y'all to have that promise um, that that is gonna be something still available to y'all. Uh, I'm sorry if any information was uh, framed in a way that sort of created that sense of concern, but that's something I don't want y'all to have to worry about at all. So I just wanted to clarify that real quick. All right, uh, thank you, Chief Steph Tweeden. Uh, Charlotte Pear, I see your hand is raised, you're recognized. Uh, hi, I am the fundraising chair for the UNC Ski and Snowboarding team, and I think Kiana did a great job talking about uh, the financial parts of skiing and snowboarding, but I wanted to add that uh, we have new members come in and learn how to ski and snowboard each year, so it's super, it's, it's really important just to like create that access to um, winter sports, and I think that having the guaranteed $50,000 each year means that we know we're going to be able to pay for the jerseys that we wear when we compete and all of that stuff. And it just, it offers a security that I feel like repealing the bill wouldn't give us. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, Olivia, your hand is still raised. Do you have anything you have, you have, you want to continue talking? Yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to add something based on um, what was just previously said. Uh, just to clarify, the sports club council wants ever, however much possible funding we can get for our sports club, as you can obviously see through the outcry here that there is a much need for funding and this deficit and whatever's the best way to do that, we support. We just believe that looking at this bill and reading it, this the argument for the bill, justifying it with that the financial documentation was incorrect and we haven't been allocating funds is not the correct way to justify it and that should be amended at least. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, Aiden Blevins, your hand is raised. Hi all, um, can you hear me well, anybody? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, sorry, I could not speak earlier, but I am a senior advisor to student body president um, Elijah Van, and she could not make it tonight, as I mentioned. Um, but I know that she is not here to answer any of your questions, and I'm, I'm sorry to backtrack, but if anybody does have any questions for President Van, please feel free to message me or I can drop my email in the chat as well, and I'll make sure those get to her. Um, she's pretty busy right now, but I'll make sure all your inquiries get answered. So I just want to put that out there. Thank you. All right, uh, Leah, your hand is raised. You recognize? Hello. So I just wanted to clarify something. I heard about this through Sports Club, so I apologize if this has already been mentioned. Um, I was wondering if there's a breakdown of how much was awarded to Sports Club before the bill was passed versus the fifty thousand that's awarded now, and like how the funds were used. I'm just curious if that information is available. Um, Treasurer Gratsky, do you know? I, I can actually speak to this. I am not sure what exactly exactly the number was, uh, but I know for a fact that it was a larger amount uh, was appropriated. I, I want to say to my, I want to say it was closer to 20% of, of, of Senate appropriations, which would have made it about sixty, seventy thousand dollars, depending on what year it was, um, and I don't hold me to that. But that is what I want to say. It was. Um, I do want to say it was, and I also believe that the average appropriation, and this is this would be expected, 
uh, to a individual organization would, was higher when the Senate was appropriating as opposed to when uh, uh, the Sports Club Council appropriated. Uh, thank you, Judge Grotsky. Lay your hand. Uh, do you have a follow up? I just wanted to thank you for the clarification. And I was here before the COVID hit and during undergrad Senate, and we did receive higher amounts of funding through undergrad Senate than allocations. But I also understand the need for strictly sports club based funding because not all clubs have the same ability to receive financial aid. Uh, thank you. Um, Olivia? Yeah, so just another response to Leah's. So th uh, this past year, we were given a lump sum from student government of $50,000, which we did then allocated amongst sports clubs who applied for the funding for student government funding specifically. Um, but according to our past as um, Grodsky mentioned it was higher in the past. So specifically, for example, for you, Leah, for ballroom dancing in the past years, you would have received more funding because there wasn't a cap for sports club. So the previous way of going, sports clubs were getting more money overall when student government was allocating them. Uh, Tori, if you have anything to add to that. Uh, Ms. Hooker, you're recognized. Yes, I was just going to say the the sum of money um, that was allocated previously was higher. Um, the benefit and when the bill was first introduced last year, um, one of the main benefits of it going through the Sport Club Council um, is that it is able to be uh, more equitable um, and more equitably distributed amongst the clubs, um, whereas in previous um, years it would go um, higher amounts to less clubs and now it's um, more uh, moderate amounts to more clubs so there are more people that are more clubs and organizations that are being impacted um, and the sport club council because they see the full budget that's submitted on an annual basis they also have um, have the insight um, of the overall budget versus just um, individual expenses that they're needed for. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hooker. Um, Chair Adal, you're recognized? Um, yeah, I, I, I would like to invite people to carry out this debate after the bill has actually been introduced. Um, I, I think there are some various misconceptions going around um, right now, and I'd like to go through the regular process rather than using the public comment period as a debate time. So I'd like to kindly invite everyone to help move on to the actual debate. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Adal. We um, only see one hand left. Um, uh, David Goh, you're recognized. Um, sure, yeah. I mean, is it okay that I'm asking this uh, since I raised my hand before Chair Erdahl, uh brought up the the idea of introducing the bill first. Uh, yeah, you're the last hand. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, well, is there any reason that we can't have the benefit of the Sport Club Council distributing funds equitably with um, the increased funding of the of the era prior to the introduction of the Sport Club Council? I'm sorry. Is that a question to me? I'm sorry. It's, it's a question for whoever can answer it. I, I can, if, if it's okay with the speaker, I can kind of say, say something on this. Um, I think there's like, there's a question of basically like whether or not um, this allocation violates a viewpoint neutrality, um, which is like, I know Treasurer Grodsky and I, I don't know if um, Andrew Richards is on this call or not. Um, they understand this concept a lot better than I do, but there's basically this question of whether or not like we even have the authority to delegate to the student I'm oh, sorry, to the sports club council to begin with. And then whether or not, um, if, even if we could do this delegation, whether or not it violates viewpoint neutrality, which basically says we cannot discriminate against organizations um, just because of like what they are or what they do. So like having a separate funding mechanism for just sports clubs um, could potentially be a violation of viewpoint neutrality since like we are treating 
um, sports clubs differently than we treat any other student organization. All right, thank you, Chair Gary. Um, I do not see any more hands raised to continue the public comment period. Um, that being that being the case, we are now going to enter um, committee of the whole to consider USB 104007, a bill to eliminate mandatory funding for the Sports Clubs Council, which has been introduced by Chair Erdahl. Um, is there a second to the motion to enter into enter um, the committee of the whole? Second. A second. All right. Um, it's tough to do a vote, but I'm going to just go ahead and say all in favor say aye. Or, aye. Move to approve by unanimous consent. Second. Second. All right. Great. Uh, we are now committee of the whole. Um, do we have any volunteers? Uh, since we're committee of the whole, um, I cannot remain, you know, I cannot lead the committee of the whole. Do we have any volunteers? Uh, we got to go back to the participants. Just raise your hand if you're going to volunteer. Uh, this can be any senator, not a chairman or the pro tempo or the speaker. If no one volunteers, I, did, I moved to suspend all necessary rules to just let Speaker Phillips preside over committee the whole. If, if no yeah, one. second. All right, any objection? All right, hearing none. All right, hearing none, we're now going to consider this bill. Uh, Chair Erdahl, you are recognized to speak on the bill. All right, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, so it, it's great to see um, so many representatives of various sports. Um, I too am on a club sport. I'm on the club water polo team. Um, I think a lot of misconceptions have been spread about this bill. Um, this is not an anti-sport bill. Um, I'd actually consider it to be a very pro-sport bill. Um, so there are various problems with the way the sports club council um, allocates funding. Um, more than 50% of their funding goes to four clubs. And um, as was previously mentioned um, by, I, I believe it might've been Chief of Staff Tweeden, um, there were a number of clubs um, last semester, like table tennis and um, the wrestling team that had to come to us last minute um, to get funding from us um, to, well, because they couldn't get funding from the Sports Club Council. And overall, I think this touches on a issue of Senate authority and um, how we allocate our monies. Um, so essentially, the current funding allocation, the limit on 50000 almost limited the amount that sports get um, because it disincentivized sports teams from going through the regular RSO funding process to apply for, you know, our funding pool of $500,000 per semester and instead limits them to that 50,000. And we are essentially, you know, guaranteeing um, what is a fifth of our budget um, to an organization that we have very little oversight over. Um, there may be years where sports teams request way more funding than $50,000, and there may be years where um, sports teams request way less, and we should have the authority um, to set um, how much money we're allocating, and we should give sports clubs the authority, the power to, you know, come to us and ask for more money um, than what is allocated to the sports club council. Um, and with that, um, I'd like to yield um, to um, former finance chair, Andrew Richards, um, if he is still here, because um, he did write the original version of this bill back in the 103rd session. Um, so um, I guess that there's also a motion to extend speaking privileges there, um, but I yield to him. Is there a second to extend motion speaking privileges to Mr. Richards? Yes. Second. second. Mr. Richards, are you here? Yeah. All right. You, uh, you may go ahead. All right, cool. I didn't actually write uh, the first version of this bill. I believe that was uh, Senator Gary. But um, essentially, this sort of arose 
Um, we passed a bill last session in the 103rd to um, allocate this money to Sports Club Council. Um, essentially, before I was finance chair and at the urging of Treasurer Ashna Shukla, um, and the rationale was essentially twofold. Uh, Treasurer Shukla felt that one, sports clubs received uh, a far greater share of funding than she felt they deserved. Um, and also she felt that sports clubs took up a large percentage of finance nights. Um, and uh, there are, I, I think that the, the Sports Club Council recognizes 48 club sports teams. Um, and there are other, you know, organizations which call themselves club sports teams, which are not part of the Sports Club Council, um, which are not eligible for funding through this process. Um, there was a, there was several complaints uh, throughout the semester from student organizations that I in, interacted with in um, finance nights, uh, where they said that the sports club council process was opaque, or they felt like they had not really been heard well, or just that it was generally unpleasant. Um, I didn't really do a lot of investigation on that. I'm, I'm a busy guy. I got things going on in my life, um, and people didn't seem that mad about it. Um, we did end up getting um, in in the legislation that we passed early on. There was a requirement that the sports club council report to Senate periodically on what they were doing, and that kind of didn't happen. But also, like I didn't super ask for it, so it's, it's difficult to blame them. But we did end up getting that report, um, and you know, it's it's like there were a lot of sports there were a lot of teams in the sports club council that didn't get any money um, that we ended up allocating money to. to. So the table tennis team is a really notable example of this. Um, where they had apparently tried to get an allocation and had not been able to, and then wound up getting money from Senate. Um, the bass fishing team club also apparently had trouble getting money. Um, and you know, if you like, I if you guys are super curious, I have the ledger, but it's like you know, there's ten thousand dollars for the ice hockey club, five thousand dollars for the climbing club, fifty five hundred dollars for the crew team. Um, the bat the ballroom dancing dancing team actually didn't receive any money from this pot of funding. Um, and I believe uh, the ski and snowboard club got $500. Um, so there were a couple of concerns. There were like um, indications that sports club council wasn't observing um, the rules in the code uh, regarding what sorts of things people like money can be spent on, um, particularly with regards to uh, like clothes and jerseys. Um, there was also stuff about um, just like wait, we, there was some concern about like whether or not this process violates viewpoint neutrality. I don't want to talk about that a lot because viewpoint neutrality is, is sort of a thorny issue. And also I think Logan will probably talk about it later. Um, but like the basic pro problem is like, are sports clubs allowed to double dip? Like, can they apply for funding in a the sports club council's process and also in the Senate's process? Um, I think the answer to that question is probably no. Um, and the, like they, they should not be allowed to do that. Um, because that would allow them to access funding in a like an advantaged way over other student organizations. Um, so that sort of leaves sports clubs in a situation where they are they have access to this fifty thousand dollar pot of money, which is a lot less money than they have received in the past. I want to emphasize again that the purpose of this bill um, was in part to reduce the amount of money we spent on sports clubs. And if you think that's a good idea, like. Fair enough, you know, uh, I don't I'm not going to take a position on whether or not more money or less money should go to sports clubs. I don't care anymore. Um, but that was the purpose of this bill. And then secondarily, the purpose of the bill was to reduce the amount of time that we spent in finance nights doing this. And I think this is the point of Senate is to allocate the student fee. Um, the whole reason that we exist, that the body exists is to like take a holistic view of every student organization on campus and say, you know, we are going to give you this much money because, you know, because we've we've applied our criteria to it um, and doing things like this is is pretty fraught. Um, I there are a couple of like theories that it's like not allowed based on the way that our power is delegated. I actually have no idea if that's true or not, um, but I think that it's just sort of vaguely a bad idea because this is this is the purpose of Senate. Um, and like delegating that authority away is generally not great. Um, oh yeah, to, to clarify by, by this bill reducing funding, I mean, the original bill which created this process was intended to reduce funding for sports clubs, not this bill. Um, I 
did not write or introduce this bill, I can't speak to its intentions. But uh, yeah, if people have questions for me, I guess you can ask them. But like, I don't know, I'm not really around anymore. I guess I'm the organizational treasurer for the executive branch still. That's fun. Uh, um, do you yield for questions? Yeah, sure. If anybody has any questions, they can. Uh, does that, um, Senator Guilano, you have your hand raised? Yeah, um, actually, it was more of a question for um, Senator Ertl. Um, it was more in relation to the point of contact that you, did you make any sort of contact or any sort of effort to reach out to the SEC about this bill or about deciding to enact this sort of legislation and put it onto the floor? Because I have it on good word from Olivia, the president of the SEC, that she was not contacted in any sort of way about this process, nor was she ever reached out about any sort of concerns that she had, had done everything by the books. Um, the staff advisor had done the same thing and they thought they were all in the clear. Um, if there were concerns like this levied in the 103rd Senate, that was also not made aware. So I'm honestly really confused as to why this was put up in the first place because of the absolute lack of accountability to $50,000 for this organization that has managed these kind of funds for multiple years um, and doing this kind of order, building, is there a question? Order, it makes no sense. Yeah, it is a question. I mean, I'm just asking, like, why would you propose this bill without consulting yeah. the SDC first? So, like, it makes no um, sense. Right. So, again, um, I we are all accountable to a student body of 30,000 people, um, not just the sports council. Um, I, in writing this bill, mainly relied on the research conducted um, during the 103rd session. Um, I believe that process was run very thoroughly, and um, we have various tests, like various RSOs, such as um, the table tennis team and um, the wrestling team, um, to the Senate um, regarding um, the Sports um, Council. And um, all of the other reasons um, that I previously listed, including uh, delegating Senate authority, um, the original intentions of creating this um, $50,000 pool being to reduce um, the money that goes to sports teams, I want to increase that. Um, and um, those are, I, I believe that the Senate should have authority um, in this area. I don't think we should be delegating our power. Um, I think sports teams should have the same process that applies to all other RSOs rather than, you know, a complicated secondary process that exists sort of outside of our scope and our authority. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, Absolutely. Any because why didn't you contact them the first two months of the session if this was such a pressing need? I mean, this might have been a holdover from last session, and I totally get that. But the process has worked for quite a while without any issues. And I think that everyone well, can I think there have been quite a few issues. Um, no. Table I, there, well, and, and uh, I'd like to point out. General, guys, 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 guys. Hey, of, chair, chair it all. Uh, guys, both of you, let, let's let the other one finish. All right? I understand that both of you are have strong opinions on this, but let's let the other one finish. I appreciate it. Chair it all, go ahead. Well, and we've had representatives of the S the Sports Club Council um, visit Senate tonight to voice their concerns. And I think we've had, and we're having a healthy debate on both sides of the issue. And so I think those concerns are being voiced and I think we're hearing um, everyone's take. Um, so, Yes, I will yield to further queries. Uh, Senator Galan, did you, did you have a follow up? Um, no, I mean, we can just move on with the questioning period if anyone else has got any questions. Yeah, uh, Chair Malacker, your hand is raised. Do you, do you have a yeah, question? I have just a clarifying question. How For how many years has the Sports Club Council gotten the $50,000 to delegate? Was it just one or was it multiple years? So I, I believe this was a COVID era program. Um, however, I will yield to uh, um, Treasurer Grotsky, um, right. 
I guess he wrote in the chat, but if you'd like to speak on that, I'll yield. Uh, uh, thank, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so this has been around, to my understanding, uh, since for, for not for years, um, uh, but since for, for less than a year, actually, I believe it's, it was uh, passed over this over last summer. Um, so th this is not a by any means a well tested tradition. This I, it's only ever been tested in a single cycle. Um, uh, and and I will I will iterate reiterate what what others have said and say that in my experience it was not a smooth cycle uh, at all. Okay, so just to clarify, this is just reverting back to pre-COVID processes. We're not like. Yeah, th this is this is not creating anything new. It okay. is simply removing the section of code that mandates that we allocate fifty thousand um, dollars to sports club council. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions for Chair at all before we move into the comment period? Um, Chief of Staff Tweeden, I believe your hand is raised. Yeah, thank you. Chair Ertle, if a um, sports club's like decided not to come and request funding, could the sports club council come and request funding in like instead of being in the place of individual sports clubs? If organizations thought it'd be better to sort of have like collective bargaining and cap out at the 25 or whatever it is per semester um, funding limit, but I mean, that'd still be 50 a year instead of compelling, like, like, would it still be an option for the sports club council to request funding from student government? Yes. Um, okay, so as a student organization, the um, sports club council could come to any finance night and request funding for itself. If sports clubs decide that, um, you know, it's better to have that collective bargaining option. Um, but again, setting that $50,000 you know, budget in stone limits what sports clubs can get. Um, you know, the sports club council could theoretically come um, and request $70,000 or um, any number of individual sports club could come to a finance night and, you know, request up to the funding limit. Um, so I, I think this opens the doors um, as the, the amount of money that um, sports clubs could get uh, theoretically. Um, yeah, further queries? Senator Chris. Super, super quick. I just wanted to uh, see if you could confirm this, that this bill could uh, potentially open like more opportunities for smaller or more niche sports clubs to get improved funding. Um, definitely. Um, so, um, I have um, the ledger that was um, provide that was provided from um, SS SCC, and um, so about fifty percent of their funding went to four clubs. Um, so with all clubs coming to the Senate, um, a lot of smaller clubs can apply for funding. Um, a lot more clubs can get to you know our much larger pool rather than the rather restricted pool of $50,000. Again, um, just like my answer to Chief of Staff Tweeden, it just opens the doors um, as to the amount of money that these sports clubs could get from us. Um, this is you know, a pro sports bill. It lets sports clubs come and get more money from us um, rather than restricting them. Um, I hope that helps, um, yeah. Uh, um, further queries. Chair Malacco, your hand is still raised. Do you have a follow up? Uh, no, sorry, that was an accident. Sorry, uh, Senator Galano, your hand is still raised. Do you have a follow up? Um, yeah, I was honestly going to say I move to call the question and enter voting procedure on the bill. Objection. Objection. All right. Um, so, um, it's tough to take a voice vote when Christian, there was no second on that motion oh that's right you're right was there a second on that motion before we move on uh can yes. i second yes so there is a second are there any objections 
Um, I have a quick question, so I object, I guess. All right, well, let's um, vote point, on point this. Order. There is a motion on the floor. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, also, yeah. actually, I, I can't raise a point of order, but a quick thing, you would need to move to suspend the rules because we haven't gone through discussion period um, prior to moving into voting. Do we want to just move on to the discussion period then? There'd be a second for that, or I guess we have to follow second follow first. Yeah, second. <clears throat> Is there any objection moving on to the um, comment period? All right, uh, hearing none, we'll move on to the comment period. Uh, Senator Morris, did you want to be recognized? I, I'd like to make a motion to limit each speech um, to three minutes, alternating between pro and against. Second. Is there a second? Trigger, did you second that? Is that what Objection. I, I, I second. Hold on. So there is a second. Is, are there any objections? Nobody's objecting. Object. God, I hate using Zoom. I apologize. Did anybody object? I, I believe Senator Guano um, objected. Um, no, excuse me. Um, I rescind that. Okay. Um, then without objection, we'll move into the comment period. Um, Senator Morris, did you have a comment? It's a comment slash question uh, for anyone who knows. Were we given the documents from the council that showed where the money was allocated to in the past semester? I can see if I can drop that um, link in the chat, um, perhaps. Thank you. Um, Chair Gary. Yeah, I move to amend the bill to strike uh, the whereas clause that states whereas the sports club council has not kept proper financial documentation and to strike the whereas clause the sports club council has failed to properly uh, fund athletic groups on campus. So at the second. That is friendly. I second. Second. I, I accept it as friendly. You do? Okay. Um, trying to find that in the document right now. I apologize. Okay, so you believe you wanted to strike the not part final financial documentation and fail to properly fund athletic groups? Yes. And that was friendly? Correct. All right, well, without objection, we'll go ahead and do that. And a point of information, um, uh, former Chair Richards has um, dropped the ledger in the chat um, for anyone who'd like to take a look at that. All right, thank you. Um, do we have any more comments on the bill? Uh, Treasurer Grosky, your hand is raised. Do you have a comment? I do, thank you. So I, I, I've been promising to speak for a while now. So. I, I would strongly urge the Senate to pass this uh, to pass this legislation. Um, I want to be uh, it's been beaten to death. This is not a bill in any way to defund sports sports clubs. Um, it is based on a pattern of observed behavior and like in, in, observed behavior on the part of the sports club council. It's not because we we hate them and we think that we, in fact I think like the Senate has is very much willing to appropriate them appropriate funding to them in a competitive process but the fact of the matter is is that at the end of the day this bill i want to be very clear is good for sports clubs um full stop it is also fairer to other organizations because it gives them the same fighting chance for that fifty thousand dollar pot of money as all of those other organizations um so it is both fairer and better for sports for sports clubs. Uh, I, I cannot stress that enough. Um, I think that it is very unwise of the Senate to delegate its full authority over 10% of its budget to another organization 
which I would say at best has limited accountability to the Senate. Um, I, I think that's very dangerous. The more you delegate the already delegated authority, the more you risk fracturing uh, the, 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 the appropriations process. And what that does is that it reduces the, the streams of accountability and the streams of, um, I guess the word is uh, cohesion that is supposed to underpin the, uh, the, the this process. I'd finally just like to speak quickly on specifically on viewpoint neutrality concerns because I, I, I there are some and they're very nuanced. But the two I identify is that if an organization goes through the club sports council process, in my interpretation of viewpoint neutrality and from my understanding of the case law that I've read it would probably be illegal for them to also then try to access the other uh, pot of funding. Uh, I think that would show a clear preference towards sports clubs uh, and would, would be problematic. Um, second, if, okay, if th th there's another concern that like, if the processes are bifurcated, the application of criteria is uneven. Um, so the, the money being appropriated to say the club tennis team or whatever is not taken in the same context as the money appropriated to I, my favorite example would be I don't know the the uh, the rocketry club which I don't I don't know if there is one. Um, so there is an unevenness in the application of criteria that comes to be a problem. Uh, this is, I think, at best a landmine, and I would very strongly urge you all to, uh, to, to, to do away with this. It was an interesting experiment that I do not believe has shown the markers of success that would make it worthwhile to keep. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, Treasurer Grotsky. Um, Chair Gary, do you have a comment? Yeah. Um, yes, I do. So. I am going to be voting in favor of this bill tonight um, for like a very specific reason. And that's because like I um, I do not like the way this provision was inserted into the code to begin with. Uh, USB 103023, which I'm going to put into the chat so you can read the whereas clauses for yourself, um, like was written very much with the intent um, and like very much with the idea of we do not want to deal with sports clubs anymore. Please make them go away. Um, like the whereas clauses state very, very clearly um, where um, like that, like a large number of club sports groups apply for funding each fiscal year. Um, and whereas allocating a lump sum at the beginning of the fiscal year will lighten the load on the funding days for the finance committee. Like this, this provision was inserted not at all to like make sports club have more funding or to make them get better access to funding. It was fun. It was put into the code specifically because um, the treasurer and the finance chair didn't want to do the work of funding sports clubs. And like that is abhorrent to me. And I think that is something we should correct immediately. Um, I will say I'm not at all opposed to trying to experiment again. I think that like student government has a number of mandatory appropriations. Like we have to give a certain number of certain amount of funding to like um, student television and to WXYC and to like other organizations on campus. Um, but like the way that we do that is through a very well-structured process that is meant to increase um, student activities on campus. And it is not to like make our jobs easier. It is like, so I think we can certainly revisit the idea of having a mandatory appropriations for sports clubs as it's, as if from what I've heard tonight, it seems that there is a like serious underfunding problem there. Um, but like the current mechanism does not do that and was explicitly created to harm sports clubs on campus. So I urge you to like seriously um, consider voting in favor of this legislation. Thank you, Chair Gary. Uh, Senator Morris, you recognized? Um, I originally, what I thought the bill was, it is not like after seeing the allocated funds from the council, I think it's kind of alarming, especially for based on the amount of groups who've got like up to $10,000 in funds and some groups are getting $0. Um, I also don't think that the point of this bill, it's, they're, they're the ones in charge of giving money. Our job as a Senate is basically allocating funds to student groups. And so this is put, 
it's going to make people less likely in the Senate to vote to give these clubs more money if people are already under the impression that they're getting the funds that they need. So I'm voting in favor of it. All right, uh, thank you, Senator Morris. Um, Senator uh, Duggan, Dugan, I apologize. You organized? Yeah, it's it's Duggan. Um, I just had a question for whoever proposes bill. How many campus um, recreation sports club leaders did you reach out to about this bill? Um, and I would like to ask why it was not sent to me as I am the president of the men's rowing program, uh, one of the four largest on campus. And then I would also like to ask how many of these leaders in uh, campus club sports are vote, would vote in favor of this bill? Yeah, um, well, thank you for that question. Um, so I guess um, I, as a member of a club sport, will be voting in favor of this bill. Um, I did not unfortunately have the opportunity to speak um, to um, leaders of um, sports teams or sports clubs. Um, um, as I've stated, I am currently um, conducting um, research in Europe right now, but I relied heavily on the original um, version of this bill, um, which was proposed in the 103rd session. And um, we've heard various testimonies um, from several RSOs, which felt that they were negatively impacted by the Sports Club Council. And um, we've had many representatives of the Sports Club Council. And um, Dennis, did we lose you there? It shared all of Are you still there? We can't hear you. Let me send him a message quickly and see if he gets that. Um. Oh, there we go. We oh, have you back. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, where did where did I cut out at? Uh, about a minute ago. <clears throat> oh boy. Okay. Um, I'll just uh, take it from the top. Um. So yeah, I, I'll be voting in favor of this. Um. You know, I'm in a club sport as well. Um. And um, I didn't have the opportunity to reach out to leaders of um, club sports. Um, I'm currently not on the continent. Um, however, I did rely heavily on um, research that was conducted um, in the finance committee of the previous Senate. Um, we've heard testimonies um, from several um, sports clubs such as um, table tennis and um, wrestling. Um, and um, I, we've had a lot of representatives of those um, sports clubs come to Senate tonight, um, a lot of them originally speaking in opposition. Hopefully we've changed their minds by now. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I was just reading the comments in the chat. Um, it is 4 a.m. over here. Um, but um, to answer your question, I, I think we've had um, a lot of people speak from both sides and I think we've heard um, what um, people in club sports have to think um, on this bill. And um, this is a bill that would open um, lots of opportunities for um, sports clubs to come and get more funding from us. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Absolutely. Um, Senator Golano, you recognize? Uh, forgive me, I must have had my hand up for no reason. Um, apologies. No Still worries. getting used to Zoom. No worries. Treasurer Gratsky, you recognized? Yeah. So I'd like, and I, I, I understand, uh, and I, I very much appreciate the, uh, the, the concerns about whether or not there was sufficient outreach done. 
And I'd like to speak not only as the treasurer, but as someone who was very involved uh, in the funding process in the last session and iterate very clearly that multiple organizations express dissatisfaction without us, ask, without us asking this express dissatisfaction with this process. And at the end of the day, it is, I think, very difficult uh, to just to go up to a uh, sports club uh, leader and ask them what their opinion is on some student government, you know, internal student government affair. Uh, but what we can see by analyzing this bill and by analyzing the facts is that it would be good for them at the same time as being fair to all other organizations and at the same time as reclaiming the authorities of the Senate. Um, so I, I don't think that you should vote against this bill be just because you feel that uh, the uh, outreach was not comprehensive enough. I, I very much want to assure you that this, this is based on feedback from student organizations uh, and comprehensive in its consideration for them. Thank you, Treasurer. Uh, Senator Gregson, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say that I was someone that originally had misunderstood the bill. Uh, and after all this discussion, I am definitely in favor of this. I think it's good to put the power back into the Senate's hands um, in terms of appropriating money to student organizations. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Chair Gary, your hand is raised. Do you have anything? At this time, I'd like to call the question. Seconded. Any objection? Hearing none. All right. And um, we're still in committee of the whole. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, I move to report out of committee um, by unanimous consent. Is there a second? Second. Any objection? Hearing none it is reported out of committee without prejudice. Um, let me see. I apologize. I'm going back to the agenda. Um, I move to suspend all necessary rules and um, call the question. Sure. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there an objection? Uh, POI, are we voting like for final passage right now? We are out of the community of the whole. So my interpretation was yes, we are now voting for final passage. Okay, cool. Um, uh, I'll repeat. Is there any objection? All right, hearing none, we are now going to vote for final passage of this bill. Um, we'll I move to approve by unanimous consent. Oh. Objection. Okay. Um, there was an objection, so this will be a roll call vote. Um, will the pro tempore please uh, call the roll? Yes, give me one second, please. Right, point of information, are we voting on voting to approve by unanimous consent or are we voting on the bill itself? I believe it'll be passage of the bill. Uh, yes, yeah, Senator Piscatelli, that was my interpretation. Okay, thank you. All right, so this will go the same way as attendance. I will call your name and please just come off mute and vote yay or nay. Um, all right, Senator Juarez Maldonado. Yay. Senator Christ. Yay. All right, I'm gonna vote yay. Senator Bomu. No. Senator, sorry, Chair Stevens. Yay. Senator Bull. Oh, sorry, not here. Senator Mercedes. Senator Vashtakidze. Yay. Senator Troutman. A pro tem for make sure um, when we're typing down the votes that you leave Bull and Mercedes blank since they're not there. Not, I don't believe that counts as a no vote. Sorry about that. No worries. Thank you. Yes. Um, Senator Troutman. Uh, nay. Senator Gray, not here. Senator Bean. Uh, yay. Uh, Senator Coleman. Nay. Senator Beatty. Nay. Senator Syed? Yes. Senator Martin, not here, I think. 
Senator Haynes? No. Senator Armstrong? Senator Armstrong is not here. Um, Senator Vo? Yes. Senator Kreider? Senator Kreider? Okay. Uh, Senator Kungle, not here. Senator Duggan? Duggan? Aye. Was it's that a, Duggan, sorry. Um, was that a yay or nay? Apologies. Nay. Nay, okay. Uh, Senator Hendricks? Abstain. Senator Yen? Yes. Senator, sorry, Chair Gary? Yes. Senator Piscatelli? Abstain. Senator Underwood? Not here. Senator Chen? Not here. Senator Morris? Yay. Senator Grimm? Nay. Senator Perez Dominguez? Not here. Senator Holden? Not here. Senator DeKinsey? Senator Kinsey. Nay. Okay. Senator Addy. Yay. Senator Vernon. Not here. Chair Malatkar. Yes. Uh, Senator Troutman. Senator Troutman's not here. Uh, Senator Kripik. Nay. Senator Bass? No. Senator Gosling? Not here. Senator McDermott? Nay. Senator Gallagher? Nay. Senator Young? Senator Young. Okay, Chair Phillips. I believe you. Um, and then Senator Robbins. Yay. Senator Harf. Senator Harf. Nay. Senator Fall. Yay. Chair Erdahl. Aye. Senator Shafreda. Yay. Senator Freeland. Uh, he's his he's in the waiting room, but I'm with him. He's he he here he is. Uh, I, nay. Okay. And I think I just admitted you into the waiting room. Um, Sorry, but Senator Kreider, you hadn't voted. That's true. I my phone died, and I was trying to get back into the call. Oh. Do I get to vote? Um, I technically no. By Parley. All right, we'll let the record reflect that I'm an emphatic nay. Okay. Um, Senator Dewan, not here. Senator Gregson. Senator yeah. yeah, sorry. No problem. Senator Lee, it's not here. Senator Dungowski. Yay. Yeah. Uh, Senator Vespute. Not here. Senator Baruch. Not here. Senator Lang. Not here. Senator Tigart. Not here. Senator Gualano. Nope. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> let's see here. I'm tied with votes. This bill with 19 yeas, 15 nays, and two abstentions will pass by two votes. All right. Congrats, everyone. We are now going to go back into the committee of the whole. Uh, is there a second? 
I make a motion to go back to the committee of the whole. <clears throat> Is there a second? Second. Any objection? Hearing none. Um, we're now going to consider USB 104008 a bill to reform the Student Safety and Security Committee. Um, that is sponsored by Chair Gary. You are recognized. Okay, I wanna start off by just disclosing up front. I am the current chair of the Student Safety and Security Committee, so I cannot vote on this bill under the um, ethics rules of the Senate. Um, and so like I bring, so like I wanna, I wanted to disclose that so that I can explain like, the way you understand, like I'm not talking to you as just a senator, I'm talking to you as the person who's tried to make this organization functional for the past year. Um, as of some brief history, the, the SSSC um, basically went defunct about three years ago now. Um, it was an organization that went defunct due to some scandals involving appropriations and like just a lack of membership. Um, that scandal being that the um, SSSC appropriated student fee money to a for-profit entity, which is strictly legal. And on top of that, in that meeting where it appropriated funding, it didn't have quorum. So it was an illegal vote to begin with. Um, I think there's a DTH article about it somewhere if you wanna go find it. Um, but basically ever since then, the SSSC has not functioned. Um, and this is bad because the SSSC funded SafeWalk. Um, and since it hasn't been able to meet, SafeWalk has like seen a significant reduction in annual funding. Um, part of the prop, like part of the problem with the SSSC is that it is just like poorly designed and is like a holdover from the um, pre 2017 Constitution. Um, I'm I'm not sure who has control, like is share, sharing their screen, but if you kind of want to start scrolling through it, I can walk through the changes that I'm proposing, which are like fairly drastic. Um, to begin with, I am like expanding the SSSC from 10 to 15 members. Um, I think that this is important because like. It's just too small to do the job it has to do. The SSSC is basically like a miniature version of um, Senate. It, it has a $100,000 annual appropriation and like 10 people from the undergrad and graduate side just do not have the time to effectively go th through all of the work that is necessary to ensure that funding application gets done. Um, so I'm also capping terms to two years because currently you serve indefinitely on the SSSC. Um, and to me, like, I don't think that's good. Like I can, I could currently be chair until I graduate. And I don't think that's a good way of promoting institutional longevity. Um, I'm also reforming like the leadership structure. Um, currently there is only a chair and a vice chair. Um, if you want to scroll down to the next section, I'm adding two new officers. Basically there's going to be a, a chair, my, um, a vice chair for operations and a vice chair for finance. Um, the idea here is like, I want to dedicate, I think there should be a dedicated person, just like how we have a finance chair, like there should be a dedicated person whose job it is to make sure the money gets spent and allocated accordingly. Um, currently that all of this falls on to me as the chair. And um, while I care a lot about this organization, I do not think I would actually have time in a normal year to actually fund, to oversee all of these funding allocations. Um, I also want to have a dedicated secretary um, because we don't do, the SSSC has not done good record keeping. There are almost no records from it, um, the past ever. I was given no records when I joined this committee and that's because no one kept records. So I think it's important that there's someone who is keeping track of everything this committee does given that it appropriates a student fee. Um, in the next section, I believe that is, um, if you want to scroll down more, um, this one basically talks about how the SSSC does its business. Um, currently, a quorum is seven out of 10 members, which is 70% um, absurdly high. Um, we, I, the SSSC has never made quorum once this semester, even though we had full membership, uh, which means that even if we wanted to appropriate the student fee, we could never legally do it. Um, I am reducing that to just a straight, simple majority. So it'll be um, at full strength, 15 members. So that'll be eight members. Um, that eight has to include at least one graduate student and at least like the chair or vice chair for operations. Um, I'm also reducing the attendance requirement for the ex officio members from 75% of all meetings to 50% of all meetings um, because this past year, um, the ex officio members did not come anywhere near to meeting that requirement and their presence in my opinion is frankly not strictly needed at every meeting. I also make it so that the committee can approve business items on a simple majority vote and not a two thirds vote, but funding requests will still have to be um, approved by a two thirds vote. Um, the last few changes are um, not too difficult. Um, I basically um, 
reduce the maximum funding limit from 33% to 25% of the total annual allocation. Um, just because like 33% in my opinion is like fairly high for one organization to receive from this committee. Um, I also get rid of um, old language that doesn't make any sense. Um, like we, it references a section 731 A and B, that section doesn't exist anymore. So that entire clause is pointless. Um, I think there's only one more section after this, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, just the duties of the, of the SSSC. Um, its only current job outside of allocating the student fee is to audit Alert Carolina. And basically, I am technically supposed to provide a report to the ONA chair and the GPSG Finance Committee chair every month where I basically dissect every Alert Carolina message that has been sent to the student body. Um, I'm going to be honest, I haven't done this. Um, I think that's kind of an absurd requirement. And as far as I can gather, it has not been done in several years. I think it's kind of a waste of time. Um, I'm not getting rid of that from the SSSC's requirements, um, but I'm, I am giving it more things to do. Um, basically, the SSSC now is going to basically be turned from just a organization that purely allocates funds to being an organization that actually focuses on student safety and security. Its job is going to be to like, Basically, if, if you were familiar with the um, Campus Commission on Safety that was created by Chancellor Guskowitz, but dissolved last year, um, it's going to try and like fill that void that's been created. So like this is going to be a place where students can come to this committee and say, these are the complaints we have about safety on campus. Um, and this can be a place for um, the undergraduate and graduate student governments to work together on making the campus a safer place um, for all students. It will still have to deliver an annual report to the entire student government every year, um, but it is not gonna be required to specifically audit Alert Carolina. Um, and the last thing I think, I don't think there are any other substantial changes. There are some changes to like wording and language scattered throughout, but that's the broad basics of it. Um, I hope that by passing this bill, we can make the SSSC an actually functional body so we can appropriate the funding. It is my understanding there's about $150,000 sitting in its reserve fund that has not been spent. Um, and that money can go to organizations like SafeWalk and any other student organization on campus to make, um, and also university departments. Like a lot of the streetlights that were installed on the walk paths were paid for by the SSSC. Um, so it's my hope that we can try and restore this organization to like actually being functional so we can get that funding moving again, make campus safer, and hopefully um, not see it go defunct again in the near future. Um, and with that, I will um, yield to any questions. Uh, Chair Gary has yielded to questions. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Senator Golano, your hand is up. Do you have a question? Um, not really. I honestly motion to suspend the rules and pass this with unanimous consent. Uh, so Senator, we are currently in committee of the whole, so we would, are you wanting to, um, have a favorable, what am I trying to say? I apologize. It's, um, I'm getting an hour or two of this meeting. I apologize. Do you want to pass through the committee favorably? And then, yeah, can... um, excuse me. I motion to pass through the committee favorably. Second. Uh, second. Um, is there any objection? All right. Hearing none, this bill will be uh, recorded favorable by the committee of the whole. Um, we are now in line for. Um, open discussion of the bill. Does anybody have any points they would like to make? All right, uh, hearing none, is there a motion to enter the voting period on this bill? Motion to enter the voting period. Second. Is there a second? Second. Oh, okay, there was. Um, was there a motion to um, pass by unanimous consent? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Is there any objection? All right. Well, with that, congratulations, uh, Chair Gary. This bill passes unanimously. Thank you all very much. Um, updating the legislation. Master list. Um, all right. Um, we are now in line to go back into Committee of the Whole. I'll make a motion to go back into Committee of the Whole for consideration of USB 104009. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection? All right, hearing none, we are now back in Committee of the Whole to consider USB 104009 
It is the Sunshine Act, which is also introduced by Chair Gary. Uh, Chair Gary, you are recognized to speak on this bill. Yeah, I want to start by saying this is a bill I've been wanting to bring for quite a while. I just didn't have the time to make sure I did it right. Um, as a brief like background info, um, student like parts of student government are subject to the state public meetings and open records law, but not all of the student government is. Like for example, Senate is because we allocate public funds. Um, the student body president is subject to these laws because they are a member of the board of trustees. But like for example, like the executive branch is kind of questionably subject to it because like it, it's unclear. So what I try to do here is basically achieve two goals. One, make all of student, the undergraduate student government at least subject to like open meetings and public records law. I'm a big supporter of these kind of policies. And secondly, um, I also, we went through a situation last session where um, it was basically stated in a Senate meeting that if it isn't a part of the student code, then it's not illegal for someone to violate it. Um, even, if that, even if those provisions were a part of state law. So, and like, I think that's kind of an absurd proposition, but I also understand the idea. Like, I think it's unreasonable to require like members of student government to go out and read the North Carolina statutes. So I basically tried to copy as much of I, as that, that we really needed into the code itself. That way you had one place to look for it. Um, the other thing is the state records law do not provide a like actual systematized way for responding to records requests. They just say you have to reasonably respond to records for records. Um, so like this bill basically actually provides the mechanism for responding to records requests. And so I'll kind of go through it. Um, basically, um, I took a lot of the language almost word for word from the Freedom of Information Act and from the Louisiana revised statutes on public meetings laws because in my opinion, if it was written by these people, they should reasonably know how the system's supposed to work. Um, the first article basically outlines some definitions, um, like what is meeting, what is a public body, what is quorum. Um, it also outlines a couple of exemptions. Like for example, the ethics committee just kind of has to be exempt from public meetings laws. Like that's done in almost every state because they're, the way that they do meetings doesn't really comply with like having public comment periods. Also like, you don't want to have, for example, like legislative caucuses subject to public meetings laws if those existed. Or you don't want to have like social gatherings subject to public records laws. That's a problem we have in New Orleans where technically speaking, if the city council were to have a social gathering that's a public meeting and you can go crash it and they can't take you out. Um, I also provide the citation for state law so if you want to go find it. And I also require that the student government has to have a website. Um, we'll get into like the depths and I'll try and not be boring with it. Basically, the way it works is like this. Um, public bodies have to provide any and all records to the students. The only exception to that is um, if that record, vi if releasing that record would um, violate an individual's confidentiality rights, violate university policy, or violate state law. And basically, the way you go about responding to public records request is simple. Um, basically, a student submits a records request. You have 10 days to respond to it. Um, you can reject or deny it. If you reject it, then that student has the right to appeal to like the head of that branch of student government. So for example, if like someone asked Senate for records and we and like the ethics chair denied it, then Speaker Phillips could overrule that denial. Or like the president could overrule the denial of like a of like a department chair. Um, uh, that's broadly how it works. There um, public bodies are allowed to ask for questions and like during that questioning period, like the 10 day time period is frozen so it doesn't count against people. Um, public bodies are required to consider partially disclosing information. So that way, like you aren't just always denying people, you try and give them as much information as you can. And I also state that if, you, if someone for some reason didn't comply with public records request, the student Supreme Court has the, will have the authority to order you to comply um, with a public records request. The public meeting section is fairly simple. Um, basically all meetings are open to the public. You have to have a public comment period. Meeting agendas have to be posted ahead of time. Um, anything that you're gonna be presenting at a meeting has to be posted ahead of time. Um, you have to give at least a 48 hours notice of meetings. Um, you also have to take minutes at meetings. Um, you're not allowed to vote on items before there's been a public comment period. Um, there are a couple other rules. If, um, like there's a lot of language here just to like cover edge cases. Um, and I can go through it in detail if you guys would like during questioning. Um, the last few sections of the like public meetings 
section, if you want to scroll down, I don't sure who's controlling the screen, basically state that like people are allowed to record public meetings and that like we have to go out, we have to accommodate that as necessary. Um, and the last two sections are about enforcement. Um, I debated for a long time, like how should this be enforced? Because like in Louisiana, the attorney general is supposed to enforce the section. Um, but like the AG of student government is not like the AG of a state. Like they have, they're kind of separate from us. And I landed on like the R&J chair doing it because like I couldn't think of anyone at exec who would do it other than the solicitor generals. But the solicitor general's job is to defend exec from these kind of things. Um, like, the, I don't know, there's really no good way to have an enforcement person. Um, I'm open to like amendments on that section. I just couldn't think of someone else who could like reasonably enforce it without like always having a conflict of interest. Um, and the last part is just um, similar to the um, previous article. The Student Supreme Court has the authority to like make people comply with this section. Um, and it also has the power to void actions taken at meetings that violate this section. So if like, for example, the president held a meeting to like consider some action and like basically went out of their way to not post a, not notify the public of the meeting or denied public comment period, the Supreme Court could say that meeting is invalid and anything you did in it is no longer legal. You have to redo it. Um, that's a very common pr like procedure that exists in a lot of state level courts. Um, that's pretty much all that's here. Um, I'm open to any questions you may have um, at this time. Uh, Chair Gary has yielded for questions. Um, <clears throat> Senator Golano, I see your hand is raised. Uh, you are recognized. Sorry, did I have my hand raised? Yes, do you not have a question? Sorry, I've not used Zoom in like nine months. I really apologize. No worries at all. Uh, Treasurer Grotsky, you're recognized. This may be me being a little bit inattentive, um, but does this specifically accept, um, like, especially in terms of public records, uh, personal data like PIDs? Because we also have to make sure that we are remaining FERPA compliant. Yeah. Um, if uh, I think whoever's controlling the um, document could scroll down to Article 2. Um, there's a section on there that's entitled like confidentiality. I forget where it is. Um, privacy protections. So like basically you are, we, you can, you are legally required to um, delete any information that could like reasonably inviolate someone's privacy or like make them identifiable. Beyond that, we like, I also state that like you can deny records if releasing them would violate university policy or state law. Um, so like there's at least a couple layers of protection there in my opinion. Or I don't think it says state law. I think it says the law. If it doesn't say the law, it should say the law. And I can like we can make that amendment. <clears throat> All right. Um, are there any other questions for Chair Gary? All right. Seeing none, um, we're going to enter. There's a point of information. There's a question. Oh, I apologize. Oh, I I didn't see that. Um, Senator Kreider, you're recognized. Um, yeah, so who who is actually going to be, say, say somebody requested some Senate documents, uh, is that the ethics chair then that is responsible for releasing those? And um, if, you know, something were to happen in which, you know, like documents got released that, you know, violated FERPA or something like that, is whoever's releasing those documents going to be potentially liable for that? Is that something that we've uh, considered? So I... Um, I believe under the current code, it is the ethics chair and the speaker are currently responsible for handling um, public records requests. Um, we are all we are already currently bound by state law, so like if someone asks us for documents, we are legally required to give it to them. Um, I would hope that no one would violate the law when handing out public records. And I, I really can't speak to like the, what kind of implications that would mean if someone, if that did happen. Um, yeah, um, I would, I also like, I'm not sure what records we have that we could release that would violate the law. Like for example, the board of elections has PID numbers. Like if that were violate that, could, if that, if those were released that could be a problem, but I'm trying to, um, so yeah, I can't speak to like the legal implications of a miss, of basically like not following state law correctly. 
Um, but I can say we are already required to do this. And this it's the ethics chair and the speaker that have to like do the administration part of it. Gotcha, thanks. All right, are there uh, any other questions for Chair Gary? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to enter? I mean, we'll enter the comment period. Um, does anybody have any comments regarding this piece of legislation? All right. Um, I, move, I move to recommend the legislation without prejudice and exit the committee of the whole. Is there a second? Second. Uh, are there any objections? All right, hearing none, uh, this bill will be referred favorably um, by the committee of the whole. Um, <clears throat> And we will now be out of the committee of the whole. Um, this, does anybody have any comments they'd like to make on this bill before we vote on it? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to enter the voting period? So moved. Second. All right, any objection? All right, seeing none, we will now enter the voting period for USB 104009. Um, with the pro tempo, I please take the roll. Yes, give me just one second, please. All right. Um, so same as we have been doing, starting with Senator Juarez Maldonado. Uh, yay. Senator Christ. Yay. I will vote yay. Senator Bomo. Yes. Senator, sorry, Chair Stevens. Yes. Uh, Senator Bull, not here. Senator Mercedes, not here. Senator Vashikidze. Nay. Senator Troutman. Senator Troutman. Sorry about that. Um, Senator Gray. Not here. Senator Bean. Uh, nay. Senator Coleman. Senator Coleman. Not here. Senator Beatty. Senator. Nay. Senator Syed. Yes. Senator Martin. Not here. Senator Haynes. Abstain. Senator Armstrong. Not here. Senator Vo. Yes. Senator Kreider. Nay. Senator Kungel. Not here. Senator Duggan. Senator Duggan. Senator Hendricks. Abstain. Um, Senator Nguyen? Yes. Senator Gary, sorry, Chair Gary? Yes. Senator Piscatelli? Abstain. Senator Underwood, not here. Senator Chen, not here. Senator Morris? Abstain. Senator Grimm? Abstain. Senator Perez Dominguez, not here. Senator Holden, not here. Senator DeKinze? No. Senator Addy? Yes. Senator Vernon, not here. Chair Malatkar? Yes. Senator Troutman, not here. Senator Kripuk? Nay. Senator Bass? Oh, no. Senator Gosling, not here. Senator McDermott. Abstain. Senator Gallagher. Senator Gallagher. Senator Young. Senator Young. Chair Phillips. Senator Robbins. Abstain. Senator Harf. Senator Harf? No. Senator Fall? 
Senator Fall? Nay. Chair Erdl? Chair Erdl? Senator Shafreda? Yay. Senator Freeland? Nay. Nay. Senator Dewan? Not here. Senator Gregson? Senator Gregson? Nay. Senator Lee? Not here. Senator Dungowski? Yay. Uh, Senator Vespute? Not here. Senator Baruch? Not here. Senator Lang? Not here. Senator Tigart? Not here. Senator Gualano? No. All right, the final vote on this bill would be 13 yays and including abstentions, 19 nays. So this bill does fail. <clears throat> um, we are now seeing no more um, bills in line for simple resolutions. Um, with that, we will have USR 10410, um, a resolution demanding the university remove the names of white supremacists, Confederates, and slave owners from all buildings. Uh, this resolution has been introduced by Senator Addy. Uh, Senator, you are recognized. Uh, hello. Um, so I just, I'm just going to introduce this bill. Um, essentially, I wrote it. Um, First of all, I would like to thank um, Senator Piscatelli for, you know, driving me to write this bill. Um, couldn't have done it without him uh, for motivating me back when um, he introduced his resolution. Um, so basically, um, the point of this bill um, is that the um, Commission on uh, History, Race, and a Way Forward um, has renamed several buildings on campus. And with the start of the new school year coming up, I um, have written this resolution to basically um, motivate the higher ups to continue um, pushing that effort. Um, yeah. Okay, um, that's basically all my point, by the way. Um, oh, I apologize. Am I on the floor or something? I apologize about that, Senator. Um, are there any questions for Senator Addy? <clears throat> All right, uh, Senator Gregson, you recognize? Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't. I did not mean to click that. I'm sorry. No worries. No worries at all. Um, are there any other questions, for Senator Addy? Uh, seeing none, we'll now move into the comment period. Are there any comments on the resolution that anybody would like to make? Any comments? Uh, Senator Chris, you recognized. Yeah, I think this is um, an important bill. I think it's it's uh, worth passing. Um, I think we need the university has already done some, but I don't think that they've done enough with regards to um, addressing our extremely problematic history. So I know some of you might not. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think about this bill. I approve it. I think we should pass it. I think it's important, and I think we need to. Um, maybe address our own discomfort with this and kind of, uh, I don't know, commit to doing a better job of addressing our past. All right, uh, thank you, Senator. Um, are there any other, <clears throat> are there any other, um, pardon me, yeah. uh, Senator Gregson. Sorry, I actually did mean to raise my hand this time. Um, reading the bill, I thought it was uh, decent. I was wondering what Keenan Stadium is very uh, dear to my heart. I was wondering what particular grievances we had um, with that one and its renaming. Uh, yes, um, I'm actually just pulling up my um, document to kind of just make sure that I have all the facts straight for. Um, going through and, you know, doing all the names, you know, I want to be important with researching this before I introduce this, obviously. Um, and 
basically, um, it's that. Sorry, I'm still. Seems my, sorry, my internet is not working over here. Give me one second. There it is. Apologies. Um, but basically, so um, Keenan Stadium is named after William Rand Keenan Sr., who was the commander of a white supremacist paramilitary force which massacred scores of Black residents in Wilmington, North, um, North Carolina, on a single day in 1898. Um, just, just not great. Um, I think we have a lot. I, I, I want to say that Keenan Stadium has actually been renamed for his son, who was, um, I don't believe, was, was nearly as objectionable. Uh, he was a dairy farmer. Yeah, it has been renamed to his son, I believe. Okay. If it has been renamed, I'm willing to amend that. Senator, you're making a motion to take away, take. to strike that, the name of Keenan Stadium. Yeah. Stadium um, from... I motion to strike Keenan Stadium from the uh, resolution. Other than that, I have no, yeah. nothing else. Senator Addy, do you find that favorable or not? Uh, for cutting uh, Keenum Stadium? Yes. I find it favorable. All right, then without prejudice, I'll take that or we'll remove that from the list. All right. <clears throat> um, continuing on, um, Senator Bass, you recognized. Uh, yeah, first of all, I think this is a really good bill, but I was also wondering, um, do we have any ideas for like the names that we're going to like change to like, for example, like Bass Hall, like, what, what, like what names do we have? Do we have any ideas of like of what exactly we're going to, uh, how, how we're going to like allocate the names or is it just going to be like building one, building two, like right now? Uh, well, first of all, I like your joke of um, Bass Hall, but second of all, so um, ultimately, this is something that I think should be left up to the committee. Um, the committee, I've researched it. Um, it is incredibly thorough with how it goes through the history of graduates of UNC and what their accomplishments have been um, and how that can be reinterpreted to, you know, our modern campus, basically. Um, so ultimately, while, um, while I have my own personal um, takes of what renaming could go where, um, I think that this is something that should be left up to the committee. Um, there's a whole process for it that you can go and look through. Um, and yeah. A point of information, whoever is controlling the screen, can you scroll down a little bit so I can see the more of the, the list? Thank you. Uh, just a quick point of information for everyone who wants to look at the list. Um, it's also available. Um, Speaker Phillips emailed it out with the email that has the Zoom link, um, and you can read through the resolution in its entirety. Thank you, Chair Stevens. I have a question. Uh, this bill is titled talking about buildings and I see Cameron Avenue listed. Do we, does the school even have like the ability to rename Cameron Avenue as it is like a public road? That feels like a little bit probably out of the jurisdiction of the school, am I wrong? Uh, no, I don't think you're wrong. Um, I think that this is something that got slipped up in editing. I released this, um, the, the one that I have here is a copy of the one that I have, and I believe I just um, removed Cameron editing and um, Avenue and my editing, but I uh, didn't go back and change it on the original. Um, probably doesn't have jurisdiction. Uh, can that be a friendly am amendment to remove Cameron Avenue then? Yeah, I deem it friendly. Yeah. All right, I will go ahead and remove that. Oops. There we go. Um, Chief Staff Tweed, you recognize? Yeah, have we already completed the formal process to rename Hamilton to Pauli Murray? Uh, I'm currently not aware of that, um, but 
if that is the case, then I'm willing to remove it from this list since that is clearly been resolved. Or so, and to, to clarify, I don't know if that's actually something that's been done or if that was just a request of the poli sci and PWAD programs. Um, is there anyone else here who knows the extent of that? For some reason, I don't think they have finished it, so I could be wrong. Yeah, to my understanding, there's a lot of um, proposals for renaming right now, but I don't know to what extent uh, the okay. renaming process has gone with each of those buildings. Also, could you capitalize the I in MacIver, McIver? Yeah, I, I deem that friendly. Cool. My audio cut out briefly. Could you please repeat that last friendly amendment? Capitalizing the I in McIver. Uh, what number is that? I'm just for quick uh, 20. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> um, all right. Chair Gary, you recognized? Yeah, this is just in like in response to the question about Hamilton. As far as I know, as like um, the departments in the building um, like have agreed to rename it and are ba and have basically like in protest called it Polymori on all of their documents with the like asterisks that it's not official yet, but like we're doing it anyways. Okay, thank you for that. All right, uh, Senator Bass, you recognize? Uh, yeah, I was wondering what the particular grievances were for uh, Mangum Hall. Yeah, for sure. Let me look that up really quickly on my personal doc document over here. Oh. Senator Addy, would you mind sharing with all of us this document with your explanations in the so chat? So, so it's basically it's basically a website, um, but I'll share this into the chat. Um, yeah, here you go. I will send this here actually, and y'all can just read up on this essentially. I put it into another document, but that's where I got most of the information allocated. Sorry. Oh shit. Uh, would it be possible to request for the Mangum one to, to get removed? Like I I personally know like the, the people like the descendants of Mangum and I just think uh the Mangum one I like understand like the history and all, but the the I think the worst one he did was being the Confederate Army. And I understand you know it's controversial, but you know, at the time, like the, yeah, you're gonna either be on one side or the other. You don't really have a choice. I don't I feel like that alone isn't really like Something to get rid of Mangum Hall. I think I think Mangum should be given a pass for this one. Uh, so while I understand this line of logic, I don't think that it is um, necessarily beneficial for UNC to commemorate um, those that were in the um, secession of the United States um, during during the time. Um, it's just not good. Um, I I'll I won't deem that friendly. Apologies. Well, what if he was like drafted though? Just. That's not the history. The amendment hasn't been deemed friendly. So, like, can are we going to enter debate on it? Like, are, are Senator Bass, are you forcing the amendment? Yeah. Uh, no what happens if I force it? We enter discussion on the amendment. Oh uh, yeah, sure. I'll force it. Oh wait, uh, yeah. Wait, actually, no. Never mind. Uh, Senator, are you withdrawing your amendment? Oh, wait, actually, never mind. I, I, I want the amendment to happen. Uh, I, I entered a discussion. All right, there's a motion and discussion. Um, <clears throat> does anybody have, um, if you could lower your hands from the, so we can have a fresh palette here. Um, if, you would have, if you have any comments on the amendment, please raise your hand. 
And the first hand I see is Chair Gary. Chair Gary, you're recognized. Okay, I have a lot of opinions and I'm gonna try and be succinct here. Um, to join or fight in the Confederate, or Confederate Army, either through the draft or not, was to support the cause of slavery, no question. Like, it does not, it's not up for any kind of historical debate. The question has been settled. Um, the South seceded to preserve the institution of slavery. That is not up for debate. Um, like, you fought in the Confederate Army, you supported a government whose existence was to maintain the institution of slavery and to deny the personhood of black people. It is not up for discussion. Okay, maintaining this name regardless, like maintaining this name on our campus is a stain. Like, I am sure that the current people, the current descendants of Mangum are great people. Like I've never met them, but like I have no reason to doubt that. But it doesn't change the fact that their ancestor was a Confederate, was a secessionist, and owned a plantation. Does not change that historical fact. Like maintaining this name is just wrong and it should be changed. All right, thank you, Chair Gary. Um, Senator Morris, you recognized? Um, personally, I think that you should take it out because at the end of the day, changing the name of these buildings or this building specifically, is not going to erase that everything that's happened in the past. And if he believes that as an opinion about that certain person, I mean, I don't see it being an issue. All right. Thank you, Senator Morris. Um, I respond Senator, to this one. Yeah, I was actually about, about to recognize you. I saw your hand is up. Of course. Thank you. Um, so it not... Um, it not fully addressing the systemic issues that currently exist within UNC is something that I do bring up um, in the appendix. Um, and like, yes, renaming this will not instantaneously fix all of these systemic injustices that exist for people of color in UNC overnight. However, it is deeply uncomfortable and unwelcoming to guests and to students um, to have buildings that are named after those that were self-pronounced white supremacists, self-pronounced secessionists, self-pronounced slave owners. This is not something that we as a university need to represent to the public. Can I comment? Right. Um, Senator Bass, you recognize? Oh yeah, so first off, you know, I just wanna say, I, I, completely, I completely agree with the statement that, you know, if there's any sort of like historical, um, like explicitly, you know, racist or whatever that stuff, you know, I understand because first off, I'm from the North, I'm not from the South, I don't have any ties to the, confederacy or whatever so I don't, have, I don't have any sympathy for that obviously but i will say it's important to look at history you know through a um, critical uh using critical thinking and it's not always black and white and you know, there's always nuances every situation for example you know george washington had, had slaves are we going to change everything named after george washington because it makes uh, some people uncomfortable or something i don't think it's, it's, it doesn't make sense to see history through such a black and white view and i, I can go on about you know like the a push debates all if we want to but i think Really, for, um, in this context, where if you were if you fought in the Confederate Army, I mean, every everyone in your because let's say I was like I don't know, born in Alabama or something, right? And obviously, I'm going to be fighting in the Confederate Army. Like, what else am I going to be doing? Because I'm not I'm not in the Union. Like, they don't really have a choice. You can't. I feel like it's not fair and it's not critical. And also, on the other hand, like, like <clears throat> I don't know what else am I trying to say. But I understand like your concerns and all that. But I just think it's important to stay critical with this type of stuff. And you know, if, the, if there's anyone, if there's any names in there, you know, who genuinely committed some like horrible stuff, yes, I agree, take them off. But you know, the, uh, secession was for a, a myriad of reasons. And if you if you actually paid attention for the A push, you would know it was not just about that. You know, some people it was more it was more about keeping their, their culture and all that, or it, it was about uh, what else? Uh, they, they wanted to um, like separate from the North because they, they saw it as like some tyranny, right? They thought we were the tyrants. I'm a North, this is coming from a Northerner, by the way, all right? Coming from a Jewish Northerner. That's what I'm saying. So I, I think, I'm, I'm just saying like Mangum, I don't, really, I don't know the details, but I saw his whole biography and all I could find is that he was in the Confederate army and that's about it. I just think that Mangum should be taken off and that's all I'm asking for. And obviously I don't, I don't disagree with any of your premises except for the fact that we need to look at this from a more nuanced, and critical perspective, that's all. Um, I would like to extend speaking privileges to Andrew Richards at this time. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right, um, Andrew Richards, you have the floor. 
Yeah, hi. Um, so <clears throat> when I first came to UNC, I lived in uh, Joyner Hall uh, for a semester. Um, and I thought it was kind of fun to live in Joyner Hall. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, you know, because my uh, grandmother's maiden name was Joyner. And I go every year to the Joyner, you know, family reunion. Um, and I, I did not realize that Joyner Hall was, in fact, named after one of my ancestors. Um, and, you know, there's, there's actually uh, at least two other buildings listed on this uh, list that are named after my ancestors, uh, named after, you know, like, people who are, you know, in, in some sense, members of my family. Um, and uh, every single person on this list did things that are absolutely and utterly reprehensible, just like unspeakable crimes. Um, you know, like uh, Wiley P. Mangum, uh, I, want to, I want to be clear, Wiley P. Mangum died in 1861 and was incredibly infirm, did not serve in the Confederate Army. Um, he was, however, an extremely prominent uh, politician in the South before the Civil War. He was extremely pro-slavery. He owned a large number of slaves. He owned a large plantation. Um, and he was an extremely notorious know-nothing, which is the predecessor to, among other things, the Ku Klux Klan. Um, I, you know, like the idea that really any of, I honestly think that there should be more names on this list. There are buildings on campus where I say, you know, this is, I am uncomfortable with this name on this building, but like it is not so bad that it needs to be on this list. But like the idea that there should be people um, who the university valorizes, who owned other human beings in bondage, who fought, who were traitors to this country, who fought this country. Uh, the idea that these, this university should, should valorize people who fought to, you know, preserve segregation, engaged in massive resistance against schools integration, against other types of integration is just, it's shocking to me. It's shocking. It's reprehensible. And uh, it is frankly outrageous to me that anyone in this this body would defend it. Um, Wiley P. Mangum is one of the most odious people in history. Um, and there are a lot of people at this university whose names are on these buildings who are among the most odious people in history. And it should be a source of enormous shame for all of you. That these people are on, on names that these names are on these buildings. Uh, I'm ashamed of it. And you should be too. You know, this is part of our history. But like there are parts of our history that we should be valorizing. There are parts of UNC's history that are good. There are things that happened at UNC that were great and that like we should be recognizing. And absolutely none of these people represent even one of these things. No one on, no one on this list is, you know, is is, you know, oh, if you judge him by the standards of his time, if you no, every single one of these people held people either held people in bondage, tortured people, or fought to withhold basic civil rights from like an entire class of people in this country. Uh, and the idea that, you know, we're going to be here and we're going to litigate, you know, oh, well, like he owned slaves, but like, was he like one of the bad ones? Yeah, he was one of the bad ones. They're all bad ones. They owned slaves. Um, this is a shocking discussion. Uh, thank you. All right. Um... Uh, Senator uh, Dagowski, you recognized? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, the whole idea that anything the Civil War was about besides slavery, whether it like to preserve culture, it all ties back to slavery in the end because this wasn't like a, a war of cuisine in difference of tastes and food or like a war in difference of languages. It was a war of ec difference in economic dependence and the South depended on slavery and those who fought to preserve that we're fighting to preserve slavery so all these arguments that sort of beat around the bush just avoid the issue and are sort of uh um not addressing the issue at core and are at best being uh accidentally ignorant all right um senator Kreider. well well i'd just like to say that i agree with uh senator richards in that we ought to uh, you know, valorize the good things that have come from this university. This is the, in my opinion, the best public research university in the world. And we ought to, you know, we ought to commemorate that. Um, and uh, Fr Francis Preston Venable, uh, the, the chemistry department is headquartered in Venable Hall. I've spent a lot of time there. I've shed tears in that building, you know, drawing hexagon after hexagon as I pursue my study of organic chemistry. 
And seeing Francis Preston Venable's name on this list, I'm res- I am reminded of, uh, if there's any Bible readers out there, Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 18 and 19, uh, which remind us that, you know, we are not to be punished for the sins of our fathers. And yes, Francis Preston Venable's father was an aide de camp uh, to Robert E. Lee during the uh, Civil War. But Francis Preston Venable was all of eight years old, uh, I believe, when the war resolved, uh, after which he did nothing but contribute to American chemical uh, study. And he actually uh, discovered uh, calcium carbide for any chemistry nerds out there. So I think that while I agree with uh, Senator Richards that we ought to, we ought to look at um, preserving and protecting the good parts of our history and examining with a, with a, with a powerful lens those aspects which um, you know, we draw shame from, we ought not to punish for the sins of the father. Uh, Senator Juarez Maldonado. Uh, hi everyone. Um, can you hear me well? My internet's some sometimes unstable. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm very quite disappointed in some way that some of the students um, are not actually seeing the the purpose of this uh, bill. Um, I'm a minority. I'm a Latina, um, but I also have a half sibling who's black. And so a lot of this history makes a lot of impact, especially to students who are coming into UNC. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, uh, my first year was not as uh, welcoming as I thought it would be. Um, So I just think that there's just a lot more to it. Um, A lot of this history is obviously um, very traumatic. And I believe there should be some things done. And so if yeah, um, I don't know how much more to put my point across, but uh, there's definitely, yeah, I'm just very shocked at this point. Wait, can, I, can I say something? Um, yeah, Senator Bass, you're recognized. Yeah. Uh, first off, I, uh, I completely like, I, I, I sympathize with uh, any, like the feelings towards this. And uh, by no means that I, that I mean to imply uh, like that I'm, you know, promoting any of this stuff, obviously. But I think uh, at the root of the problem, if you look at UNC in North Campus, it's like mostly white people. And then in South Campus, it's mostly like uh, like uh, people of, uh, how do you describe it? People of color. So if you, were, if you were to like actually address the issue, I think you should actually take, we should take action on that. Like, I'm not saying we shouldn't do this either, but I'm saying like, if you, if you wanna like actually like change, like, um, like take some action, I think that's uh, like a more like better way to approach like actually tackling the core root of like the divisions uh, in the like the racial. So I mean it's it's kind of weird, right? Because like I don't I don't know any other colleges where like there's such a, like a racial divide um, on campus, and I think that's uh, something that should be addressed, and that would be a good way to take action. Can I speak. Yeah. Who who right. was that? that? Go ahead. That was me. Who? I'm sorry, it's not coming Maddox, up. That was up. Uh, there's a lot of hands raised, so um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, start. sure, Senator Addy, Addy, go ahead. Yes. Um. So I want to reiterate that this bill does not seek to undo all of the systemic injustices that exist within UNC. Um. It does not seek to fix every single um misjustice that has ever been placed um on a person of color on this campus. This the objective of this bill is to rename buildings that are named after people who do who actively have acted against um, diversity inclusion on um, for the members of this campus. These are people that have done horrible, horrible things. And um, this bill does not seek to just go and fix every single problem immediately. This is just to fix the names. This has to be something that this is a massive problem that cannot be fixed in a single bill. And I hope that more bills um, addressing those systemic issues are brought up by the people that have complained that this is not something that is direct action. If I may. Uh, go ahead, Senator. Um, yeah, honestly, I wanna do this right. Like the way I see it is that, yeah, a lot of these people on these buildings have done absolutely reprehensible things in the past and you know, that is the legacy that they leave behind at UNC with their names on the building. Um, and that goes for 
a lot of these people on this list, but that did not go for everyone on that. We heard about Pierce. We talked about Keenan. We talked about how we've had to talk about, excuse me, um, a lot of the changes that we had to make. And the question that I'm trying to reach is not really about, you know, some sort of, you know, rationalizing, keeping the names on the buildings. It's more about doing it right. Um, I mean, I'm looking at this list and I haven't even seen or heard about maybe 10 or 12 of these buildings. And I'm not even sure about the legacy of these people, what they leave behind. And it's really not on me to do that kind of research before I go vote on this thing that I'm putting my name on, um, not knowing that it might defame a family that has, you know, ties to this person where we falsely accuse them of white supremacy, of slavery, um, that sort of thing. Ultimately, I want to see research on these people. I want to make sure that we're examining them correctly and without any sort of like arbitrage about who these people are. The reason I can't vote on this bill is because I don't know half the people on this list. I don't know the legacies that these people leave behind. And I won't be confident about doing that sort of thing and just taking you know, people's word on it um, because that wouldn't be doing due diligence on my part and uh, the people of UNC. So, I mean, that's all I got to say about it. May I speak? Uh, go ahead. Uh, I would like to note um, that you can abstain on this bill. Um, and also, this seems to be an admission that you are unaware of the topics that are being discussed. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Unaware about the, <laughs> man, okay, do not go there. Um, that's, honestly incredible that you even said that um i don't even know what you mean by that i'm quite aware about the bill that is being discussed i know about a lot of the people on this and it is like i said not my job to go out and do that sort of independent research that should be taken into account in the bill so that the people that we show it to will be able to reference that and understand yeah this is why these specific people are bad because otherwise this bill is going to go into the hands of people in government and they're gonna laugh at it or they're not gonna know what it is. And so if we provide that research through the bill, I mean, excuse me, through the resolution, um, it's ultimately good for everybody who looks at it. It's ultimately good for everybody who is able to see it and reference that for the vast majority of people who don't know because not everyone will be informed on this. I myself am not informed on all of it. And I know the vast majority of the student body of every person that's going to read it is not going to be. So we're doing a service to a lot of people if we include that language, but without it, people are just looking at names and making assumptions. Uh, uh, Senator Gregson, go ahead. Sorry, um, kind of going off what Elliot was saying. Uh, I totally think that this would be better tackled if it was maybe like five at a time with um, like research included into the resolution that here, yeah, these five people were blank, blank and blank. Cause I agree. I think probably 90% of these people uh, did reprehensible things, but like I already pointed out um, just like my first one, Keenan stadium getting taken off the list. I think Venable hall should also be taken off the list. Um, and there's probably some more if I went and actually researched all 34. And that's something that I'd like to do, like, on my free time, not during the discussion, during the meeting at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. Um, so that's where I stand. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, Senator Hendricks. Um, okay, uh, I would first like to say um, to Senator Addy, I, I commend you for this bill. I do think this is a really important bill. Um, ever since we discussed the campus beautification and we decided that this was a more of a separate thing, I was really looking forward to seeing who was going to be the one to put it forward. And I genuinely think this is a, a, a wonderful bill. I, I have some similar confusions that I think almost every Senator that's spoken so far has had just about certain names, not saying that, you know, all these names, you know, haven't done bad things, 
Um, but as we've mentioned, a few of them have been taken off the list just because people have been either misinformed or just a little bit confused of what everyone has done. And uh, I don't want to say, and I don't think anyone in this, the, the Senate has said that they don't want this bill to pass. I think what I hear from everyone is that they want this bill to pass, but they don't feel like they can put their name on it, put it forward if they don't truly understand all of the decisions behind these names. And I, I can see that personally for myself because I'm reading some of these names and I'm like, wow, I didn't know this was a building that was an issue. And I want to research them. I want to make sure that we're doing all the exact uh, buildings that need to be done because it, it's an important issue. Same thing of saying there's other building, like uh, Andrew Richards said, there's other buildings that could go on this list. And I agree with that. And I, I personally, if I had to make a suggestion, I would say uh, if, if people are feeling um, that they can't put their put forward this bill, I don't think the idea should be, you know, you abstain and you just you just say you're not a part of this. I think it might be beneficial if this bill were to be uh, tabled till the next meeting and everyone take the next month to do their research and contact the people that sponsored this bill, such as Senator Addy, and kind of come to a consensus of, yes, this is what we're supporting for this exact reason. I do not think this is a bad bill. I think this is a necessity to our campus. And I really, really think everyone in here agrees with that because it genuinely is a big issue. And I just think everyone wants to have the facts straight before they say, let's vote on it right now. This is a huge decision as we've already passed bills before. And like, uh, I believe it was Logan Grotsky said, we have had positive responses to passing bills like this before. Let's make this one the one where we're all like, yes, the whole Senate is behind this and we want this to happen. That's just my opinion. I believe you guys should uh, uh, table or come back to this bill at another time. Uh, thank you, Senator Hendricks. I would, I think it was brought up in the pat and the chat is saying I would like to remind everybody this is technically a debate on the amendment, <clears throat> not on the resolution itself. Although that point can definitely be taken to consider the bill, the resolution itself. Um, Chair Gary, you recognized? Uh, yeah, I call the question on this amendment. I guess like we've been debating it for at least forty-five minutes now. Sure. Um, let me pull up the voting record list. Uh, Wait, that, I, I take it's... back the and then sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you withdraw. You with you withdraw the amendment. Oh uh, yeah, if that's what ends the discussion. Yeah. Sure. All right. Um, then we're back in consideration of the resolution itself. Does anybody have any more comments they'd like to make on it, or do we want to some a couple people mentioning tabling it, or do we want to vote on it? As a point of table information the for the Senate, you cannot uh, vote. You cannot table an, an item beyond uh, adjournment. Um, and I, I, so, so that's just one thing to consider. Then I move to vote. Is okay. that second? second. Um, all right, we are now in the voting period. Um, let me pull up the list. Uh, point of information or point of inquiry, I'm sorry. I just want to be very clear. So um, for this, because we've just been debating for so long. Um, so for this vote, we are voting for the bill to be passed, correct? That's correct. Okay. And then, so a yes would be, yes, we should pass this. And then no would be no. Yeah. Yes, but it would be to pass the bill as present. Mm -hmm. Just double level. checking. Yeah, of course. Uh, would the pro tempo please call the roll for the vote? Yep. All right. So um, just to reiterate, yes is to pass this as it is. Uh, no is to not pass it. Starting with Senator Juarez Maldonado. My apologies. Yes. Senator Christ. Yes. I will abstain. Senator Bomu. No. Senator, sorry, Chair Stevens. Yes. Senator Bull is not here. Senator Mercedes is not here. Senator Bashikidze. No. Senator Troutman. 
Senator Gray. Here, Senator Bean. Uh, no. Senator Coleman. No. Senator Beatty. No. Senator Syed. Yes. Senator Martin. Here, Senator Haynes. Senator Haynes. Senator Armstrong, not here. Senator Vo. Yes. Senator Kreider. Uh, until more research is done, I cannot in good conscience vote yes, so I'm going to be a nay on this one. Senator Kungal, not here. Senator Duggan. Senator Duggan. Senator Hendricks. No. Senator Yen. Yes. Chair Gary. Yes. Senator Piscatelli. No. Senator Underwood, not here. Senator Chen, not here. Senator Morris. No. Senator Grimm. Senator Grimm. Senator Perez Dominguez, not here. Senator Holden, not here. Senator DeKinze? No. Senator Addy? Yes. Senator Vernon, not here. Chair Malathkar? Yes. Senator Troutman, not here. Senator Kripik? No. Senator Bass? Uh, no, because I'm trying to table this. Senator Gosling, not here. Senator McDermott? No. That's Senator Gallagher. Senator Gallagher. Senator Young. Senator Young. Chair Phillips. Senator Robbins? Yes. Senator Harf. Senator Harf. Senator Fall. Five Senator times. Hall. Chair Ertel. Chair Ertel. Senator Chifreda, sorry. Yay. Senator Freeland. Nay. Senator Dewan. Not here. Senator Gregson. I am also a nay for more research. Senator Lee. Senator Dungowski. Yay. Senator Vespute, not here. Senator Baruch, not here. Senator Lang, not here. Senator Tigart, not here. Senator Gualano. Until more research is done, I'm going to vote nay. Right. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> um, for the vote on USR 10410, the vote is 12 yays, 16 nays, and two abstentions. Point of order. Um... Just for clarification, uh, in reference to USB 104009, the Sunshine Act, did that pass or fail? I'm just looking at the uh, voting records, and it looks like there was a majority. I can't remember what was what the um, the call was. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. Um, there have been there's been some confusion and stuff brought up to me by a couple other senators tonight. The way I've always been told and was told by the former speaker how to run these meetings is that a vote. And the abstention is technically a vote in the negative since you need a majority. And that technically counts as a vote, even though you're not voting. If that makes sense, you're, you're, you are a member that is present, but you're not voting in favor. So it technically counts in the negative. Um, and the spreadsheet that she gave me to operate also when you put in abstention counts it as a negative. Um, so technically the vote was 13 to 12, but there were seven abstentions because I've been told that, that votes in the negative 
or abstentions count as a vote in the negative. That made me um, conclude that it was a that it failed. Now I understand the concern, um, and so I've I've already told uh, Chair Gary and some other folks I'm more than happy to reach out to Bobby tomorrow just to make sure that we understand this. Um, the question about the parliamentarian, we have the application. With hey, the parliamentarian. Oh, I say, Christian, I, I say, are do you wanting guidance on this or? Uh, yes, but at this point at 1030, I would appreciate guidance where we, if, if, if it comes to my attention later that that vote was supposed to count in the favorable and or the, that this, that bill technically did pass, I'd be more than, I'll definitely let everybody know that okay. it did pass. I say, because, and this is just for your records, I'd refer to USR 110004 subsection A. The second clause there establishes that abstention votes are not counted in the final vote, so it should have passed. All right, I certainly appreciate the insight. And again, I'll, I'll I'll talk to you after the meeting. I'll talk to Chair Gary after the meeting, and I'll definitely talk to Bobby tomorrow morning, just to clarify because I, I I want to get this right. And just you know, not, not to sound like I don't know what I'm doing. I, in my previous three years in student government at two universities, I've always been told that they they counted as a no. So if that's not the case, I'm more than happy to clarify it and to fix it. Um, but I'll definitely I'll talk to both of you all tonight after the meeting and talk to Bobby in the morning, and then. I can have, I'll be more than happy to send you all an email tomorrow morning, just letting you all know the result of the conversations. And as a point of inquiry, um, are you positive that it is fully, um, I'm going to say, uh, above board to call something as failed during proactively say, say that it, that did pass? I, I'm just a little bit worried about the legality of that in sure. code. I yeah, I mean I understand that. I again I'm just simply going off of what I've known in the past. But if it the vote is the vote and the vote and the vote is final. And so if, if if it was misdeclared then I certainly will apologize uh profusely but um if if it turns out that the vote was favorable then I don't see any negative impact of going back and saying I apologize we got that wrong. I mean I got that wrong and that it turns out it did pass. Um, this is unfortunately at 1030, it's a little late to be calling Bobby to get some clarification on this. And, but I'm, again, I'm, I'm just going off of what I know and I've been told by the previous speaker. Uh, but that is something I'm definitely uh, we'll follow up on and I, I'm, if you want to chat as well after me, I'm more than happy to do that, uh, Treasurer Grotsky. Um, the last resolution that we have on the um, agenda tonight is USR 10411, uh, a resolution congratulating the Tar Heels women's lacrosse team on their national championship victory. Uh, this was introduced by uh, Senator Addy. Uh, Senator, you are recognized uh, to speak on the resolution. Hello. Um, I'm back again. So, as we all know, um, the Tar Heels women's lacrosse team beat the um, Boston College Eagles um, and claimed the NCAA, NCAA I can't talk NCAA title. Um, we should congratulate them. That's all. I move to suspend all necessary rules in order to pass this by unanimous consent. Second. 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 Any objection? Hearing none. This resolution will pass by unanimous consent. Congratulations, Senator Addy. Um, that is the end of the simple resolutions calendar. Um, are there any notices or announcements for the body that anybody would like to bring up? All right, uh, seeing none, uh, Chair Gary, uh, Treasurer Grotsky, um, if, if y'all would like to stay on afterwards, I'm more than happy to chat with you for a little bit, uh, if y'all are free. Um, but apart from that, that is the end of tonight's meeting. Uh, we will adjourn. It is 1030. Or is there a motion for adjournment? I apologize. Motion for adjournment. Second. Still moved. Second. Any objections? All right. Hearing none, we are adjourned at 1030. I hope everybody has a great evening and we'll see everybody in June. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, Christian. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Y'all have a good one. Have a good summer. You too, man. Thank <laughs> you.
Before I hop off real quick, Christian, while I have you, do you have time sometime this week to discuss next steps with um, the Senate staff positions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm usually working every day eight to four. So if, you, if you're free after 4 p.m., just feel free to give me a call and work. I'd be happy to chat with you about that. Perfect. Okay, I'll try to reach out tomorrow. I'm also on basically the same schedule, eight to five. So I'll call you around six. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Have a good one. You too.